Um, I got about 10 of your most frequent questions down there, but I'll be taking notes on more. So that way everybody who has a question about the game has somewhere to get some basic information like uh, how much the game will cost, where it'll be available, what you'll be able to do at early access launch, that type of thing. So welcome. Good to see everybody here. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be back. Hope you all uh, enjoyed your weekend. And uh, yeah, don't forget America, it's tax day for all of you. I hope you're already done with them and can focus on more enjoyable things, such as Manor Lords, who are apparently I've been hearing. You guys have been asking me, too, if I've been watching the Fallout series and whatnot. I haven't had a chance yet. I, I know you guys have said it's good, so it'll probably be on my list of things to watch over the next, uh, you know, like the next year when I get some time. But it's good to hear that uh, we get more good things related to gaming, because gaming is good, and we want all of gaming to be good, you know? And this is certainly one that is um, very good as well. Manor Lords is certainly not a perfect game, and there's a lot of things that are set to change probably after its early access release. But damn it, we got ourselves a good game that can only get better. And it's nice that one person took seven years of their life, kind of working part-time, to make this game. By the way, uh, Hooded Horse, the publishers, and Slavic Magic, the developer, uh, have worked together to send some really cool stuff to me and I hope many other content creators too. So exclamation point Instagram, exclamation point Twitter, check that out. I also posted a photo on uh, YouTube too this morning. But um, yeah, follow me on those spots because really cool stuff that the uh, developers, um, you know, all, all sorts of devs send out cool stuff all the time. Um, whether it be keys or whatnot. Unfortunately, I checked the box. I did not get any additional keys. I did get the card that I told you guys. You know, developers usually send out a card that says, hey, our game comes out on this day. But there were no additional keys in there. So I'll try to reach out to Manor Lords and see if perhaps sometime between now and launch or maybe in, in the future uh, they'll give us some keys so I can give them to you. Because I already got the game, and I think the game's great. So I'd love to uh, give you all the game uh, for free. But just remember, this will drop on April 26, 2024. Uh, no official price listed on Steam yet, so just add it to your wish list. But remember, it'll be on GOG. And also, if you have Game Pass, day one in Game Pass, 26th of April. Not too long now. All right, uh, what are we down to? About 11 days? Not too long. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Yeah, let's get that damn flute going. I agree with you. I agree with you. Last night, I was doing some recordings, by the way, for you guys for tutorials and stuff. And um, last night at the end of our stream, we also were poking the bear. I was trying to see what it would be like to fight the Baron. And... He doesn't seem too hard. We lost the battle. Um, I, I, I bought some militia and I sent in my, my troops. And uh, we were very close to winning. And I was surprised because we kind of just random. I was just like, what happens? All right, let's 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 quick save. And then uh, I went in there and we were damn close to winning. Our troops, we had like 24 troops of like basic armor. So I think if we build a second manor and if we upgrade our troops, you guys, you know, my uh, Raptorian guard, if we uh, get you guys like the tier 2 armor, I, I think we could have a dub. Um, I'm not sure exactly how the game mode ends, like if we need to take all the territories or just wipe out the two of the Baron, but regardless, I think we should try to at least settle everything. Although, um, I think it'll also be very fun to, um, maybe start over on a higher difficulty and, you know, given all the lessons learned, really try to start to make this game a struggle. Now for this one, for me, now that I'm starting to understand the game and put so much hours into like Farthest Frontier and other survival city builders, this one is like, um, not... So difficult, but it's because I've been taking it slow and really making use of all my time. As where, um, if we hadn't done that, we'd probably be having what you call a bad time. But regardless, welcome back. Good to see you all here. All right, so uh, yeah, yesterday we uh, invaded this uh, area here. The Baron came out with his troops. We had a battle like down here, and it uh, it actually went pretty well. I mean, again, we lost, but. He was very close to death, so I was like, wow, I thought it would take much more. But remember, we don't have cavalry and other things in the game, which eventually I'm sure more armies will be added in the future. And remember also the the Lord's Manor, the enemy's like HQ is like off the map. So hopefully in the future, we actually get to see him build and build up and trade and stuff. It'd be cool to see another living, breathing faction on the map other than the, um, the uh, brigands or the bandits. Alright, um, yeah, so anyway, yesterday we were kind of putzing around here in this town. We were waiting a while for it to grow, but it grew really quickly. This town is really starting to grow up fast. It's, uh, you know, still kind of slow, but honestly, because we delivered all these materials over here early, this town has been able to pop off a church, a market, and has additional housing for, uh, looks like up to 18. We've only got seven people living there, so that's pretty good. You love this game? Me too. Me too. Uh, Mr. Raptor, what have you been doing other than this? Um, 
Sleeping and breathing and eating and manor lords. <laughs> Eat, sleep, breathe, and manor lords. Oh, we got bandits again. Oh, and you guys are right there. How how convenient this is. Look at this. Bandits just randomly showed up right there. Well, let's turn right around and go kick some butt. The army of chat is locked in and ready to go. And thank you very much for the 20. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Good to see you back. All right, let's go uh, get into position and knock those guys out. Look at this. Look at this game. Look at this game. Pretty. It's a good song. Can't wait to get your hands on the game. I know. I know. Okay, what are we doing over here? We got uh, 14 people free. Uh, what jobs can we add them to? Forging because it's spring. Got full workers there at the farms, I'm pretty sure. I think we built a third farm? Oh, yeah. Get people in that farm, too. That They'll help out. And then we got two free people to drive oxen around, which is fine. Oh, also, um, I'll make another hitching post so we can get another oxen. How many do we have? We have six oxen. Nine in total, which means three are assigned to... We'll build a plowing station. Actually, I think if we have a plowing station, I wonder if the hort or the um, the oxen is a. No, I think he's about well, whatever. We'll build a hitching post regardless. I'm I'm still gonna want more horses and stuff. Lots of round green. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's Hi, lots Raptor. of green. Can you kindly stop making me jealous and ask the amazing dev to release it sooner? So, Pretty please with cherry on top. I know. But uh, any sort of issues we run into before the release, the dev is probably working on fixing. I'm sure there's been a couple major issues, and the dev is already working on them. I haven't seen any major issues, but I'm sure they found something. All right, and what are we doing for planks here? 35. We have a hunting area. We do. We need more people here, though. We'll uh, keep working on this town when the population pops off. Right now, the church and food should be just good enough, so we're working on that one. We're working on that one. Oh, here they come. All right, we're starting today off with a nice battle. Let's uh, back up a little bit. It's our chat army. I've been naming all of these troops after you guys, too. So every time we capture a new region and if we build a... Um, if we build a uh, manor and a garrison, we get to add additional 24 troops to the um, to my the, to the personal guard, the Raptorian guard. So we will uh, we'll be adding more. Check it out; they got our logo on the banner too. The uh, coat of arms that's up here in the right corner. Same thing. Pretty cool. All right. It'll take them a few minutes to get here, so we'll go do something else while we wait. Yeah, I think multiplayer would work in a game like this, but you'd have to play for an insane amount of time. If that happens, it's going to be like after uh, release or like one of the last things being worked on. You got to flesh out the game and out all the content first, and then do that. I'd love to see it, but I also don't think it's necessary for me, but um, I could understand a lot of people would want that, being able to see a friend build working together. Yeah, that's true. In multiplayer, you wouldn't be able to pause, and uh, you wouldn't be able to... It'd probably be tricky to speed up, too, because you know, you'd be like, all right, I want to speed up time, and your friend's like, no, I'm building my my farm and stuff. So this would be like playing uh, Arts of Iron on like .5 speed the whole time. But um, it's possible. And it would only help this game, not, not that it needs it. Oh, we also have a uh, point for Fritzburg. Um, I'm going to hold off on that still. I don't know what I want to do with that town. Maybe we'll uh, build an orchard 
in those houses and start shipping apples over to the other town. Actually, maybe we could do that. Maybe we could do apples and honey in the new town and ship that over to the other town. Over to uh, Raptoria. Alright, let's give a little motivational speech this morning. <clears throat> Okay. Awfully wet out here. Good thing we didn't bring archers because they'd be less accurate. Yeah, there they are. Alright guys, uh, same drill as always. Uh, kill the enemy and don't die. Pretty simple. A lot of you guys have shields. Looking good. Yep, show off those weapons. There you go. Get fired up now. Yep, get ready to spill their blood and off of their heads and all that stuff. And uh, I guess have a good battle. Careful with that sword. Okay. Good luck guys. Here they go. Oh, that guy's already dead. Damn, the guy with the banner's got a tough job, man. He's got to hold that thing and swing the sword. I need double pay. They're dead. It's over. We've won. And Tavern Banger again to celebrate. Oh, we got to go to their camp. I was on the way home. I'm gonna go home. Bum, 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 bum. All right. While we wait, I'll uh, order some more structures to be built, and we'll get some hunting and some berry picking going. Get your flutes. Are we going to take a third region today? Uh, we might. Probably take the one next to this one. I'm going to try to flesh this town out a little bit and use this town to send some goods to uh, our main town that we don't have yet. Because the main town is just completely flooded with like trade, Like I built three trade depots in the big town and it's still not enough to... like ship in and ship out stuff like I've got six horses and like uh, what is it 12 people working there I don't want to keep dedicating so many people to that town for that so I'm gonna mix it up I know the flutes fire I know I will build it here our forger here That'll be fine.
Do we have somebody on login? Where's that login camp? Oh, good. We got a family to move in here. Excellent. Our first family in the new town. Do we have vegetable farms going? I want to build one there. Chicken coops. All right, so then we'll get eggs going. Oh, they got lots of eggs, lots of vegetables already. But we'll uh, we'll make more. Then we'll get meat going too and berries. So they'll they'll be happy. They'll be happy about that. More wood is lead needed. Yes, indeed it is. Yeah, we're we're starting a new town. Yeah, we're um we're expanding. This is good. This is uh we're not starting a new save or a new game or anything. We're starting a whole new city. So we're uh, conquering all new lands. I think we'll probably take this territory up here in the middle next. And then we'll... Uh, but uh, for the town that we just captured, I'm going to try to build a manor first so we can get a bigger military. Alright, let's go ahead and send that to the nearest town. And send the troops back to base. Alright. Oh yeah, it's got some nice deposits for stone and berries. Clay over there and stone. More iron ore there. Got a huge deposit of iron though. We're good on iron for time, oh, quite some time. How are we doing here? 106 living space? Is there not a way to stop people from coming in? Well, I guess I'll build some more houses here. I was thinking if we didn't add new houses, we wouldn't get new people. I need houses that big anymore, really. Hmm. These could be for more vegetable farms. We've got so many, but I could ship them out. But to ship one thing, it, it, it's so, like to ship one resource, you have to build a building, then you have to hire somebody to work at that building, then you get to buy mules, then you got to do the same at the town that will receive those goods, and then you have to ship something back from the other town. Like trade can't be one way. They have to send something back. It's like what, berries or something? Hmm. Yeah, we have an FAQ, uh, so make sure you guys read the pin message, which tells you to check the description for all your, your questions. I'm going to go with it. What's up, Poglad? Good to see you back. Hey, what's up, grumpy gamer guy? Welcome back to you, too. Yeah, build a... <laughs> yeah, we need a post office. Uh, I don't really uh, like how that pack mule thing works. Like, you can only send one resource at a time. And it's like, man, I got, I got way more stuff that I could send between these towns. It's such a bottleneck. What's up, Beard Lasers? Glad to have you a longtime supporter on YouTube, dude. Thank you for your support. You think you'll play this one on release? I hope you do. I, I hope uh, everybody plays it and enjoys it. And if it's not for you, feel free to return it and don't feel bad about it. You know, If it's not a game for you, that's fine. In fact, maybe you'll enjoy watching it more than playing it, to which I'm happy to be of service. 
you know, that happens. There's certainly games that I enjoy to watch more than play. It's nice sometimes to watch other people know what they're doing and explain what's going on and, and like, enjoy it. I'd like to have a classic car, too, but, like, I also don't, you know, want to maintain that and whatnot. So it's nice to see other people talk about it, drive it around, you know. I, I don't have time for that, but I like it. Yo, Beard Lasers, thanks for your Tier 1 Twitch sub as well. Thank you very much. By the way, everybody, uh, everybody who's on Twitch, I should have finally, and we're working with Thurston on this, our, uh, our Discord mod, but uh, we're working on, and I think it finally works now, should be able to uh, link your Discord and your Twitch account together and then get access to the members-only section on the Discord. If not, just message Thirsty Thurston and just ask him what you need to do. There was just something where I had to reconnect my Twitch account and my Discord account. They somehow got disconnected from my, my, Twi my Discord server and Twitch account. And then, um, and then we had to do something with our bot. So that way the bot would, like, let people in, too. So we just had to update those things and kind of took... It's kind of like launch keys, you know? We had it, t it took two people to turn the keys at the same time, and now we finally did it. So, Mads, 36 months. Thank you very much for your Raptor Egg support. Thank you. Bigo, 36. Silverback, right? Or is that 32? I always forget with YouTube. But yes, thank you. What's going on here? Are they plowing the fields in May? Early access. Kind of weird sometimes. Like, they'll be on the field. I think the, uh, putting the cart before the horse here, my friend. Early access. Ah, oh, that's a good question. All right. Uh, when you guys are asking questions, I'm going to tab out and actually add some things to my FAQ. Uh, I'll uh, have more answers on mods soon. I just put that in there. When you guys ask questions I don't know the answers to, I'm going to go try to find answers and put them in my description. And if I don't know the answer, I'll just wait until somebody says something in chat. I did a bit of research on this one, but totally can't do all the research on this one. I mean, there's just there's just too much to know, too much, too much, too many things going on before launch, you know. Beard lasers, five gifted tier one subs to the Twitch chat. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Flute guy, let's celebrate with some flutes. YouTube chat's got the flutes. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, the second building you can build when you're building a house, it gives more population to the house or gives more production, taxes, etc. Um, technically, both, I think. So I have some questions, too, about that, where I'm trying to figure that out. So um, when you build a plot, you usually build a house on that plot. Sometimes you can build something in the backyard, like here we've got a vegetable farm. The vegetable farm's productivity is determined by the size of the plot. So the bigger the plot, obviously, the more space for farming. Um, and then also you could build like a secondary house sometimes on properties if you built them um, in a certain way. So that means that there's a family living here and a family living here. So we got two homes, so two families are living here. And um, my question then is like, does that also increase the productivity of the vegetable farms? Because you got two people, you know, taking care of that. So maybe you know, more people to do weeding and other things like that. That I don't know. Um, but also there are certain buildings where when you upgrade to tier three, buildings can have more families in them too. So you can go from tier one to tier two, and then you can go from tier two to tier three. And the tier three buildings, I think get extra space in them. But if you have a tier three building like this one is a cobbler, they make shoes here. So there's two families. You can see them separated by the, the little line here. Oh yeah, it shows that they're working there. Okay, so that, that's confirmed. So it looks like when you get, yeah, right there, two out of two families. Yeah, it looks like they will work on the same job. Yeah, that's a damn good question, dude. That's a good question. And then let's check the answer over here, too. No. Over here at the Burgage Plot 1, one group is a farmer. They work over here at the actual farm. And another group works at the granary, which is down uh, over here or something like that. There. So it looks like there's not an answer for this one officially. I'm not sure if more people at a tier one burgage plot will actually make the burgage plot more productive. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Good question. Good question. 
Uh, Ken, I thank you very much for the three months as a bear cub. Have you upgraded a plot with two homes? Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Yep. Yeah, some of these could be built with two homes. Uh, the way you know that, and I'll cover this in a tutorial video coming out soon. Um, traditionally in Manor Lords, you could build a house like this. You can build like a little small plot for a house. Like that. That'll just be like a house with a little backyard and that's it. If you make the plot big enough, you'll get that little dotted line that shows like a little warehouse with a... It's like a little shed with a hammer in it. That means this plot can be customized to have a farm, a chicken coop, a goat pen, and more things as it levels up. If you make it bigger, like a little bit, you see how there's a plus sign to the left of the main house? You can build another house later on after the construction is complete. So you can do one wave of construction that opens up the house to be occupied, and then you can immediately upgrade it to have a farm or something like that. And then you have to upgrade it again to build that little extension so you can fit two families in that tiny-ass little plot like that. Uh, and then, of course, if you make the plot bigger, then it's, it's just better for farming. It looks like you could essentially, if you want to, make a plot as big as you want. Like, seriously, you can make a plot this huge, and then, instead of having all these houses here, you can turn this into, like, one big old mansion, essentially. It's like, like you can have one house and one little extendo house here working on one property. But, you know, obviously... You probably want more hands to do the work in other places, so you might want to make that maybe three or four, that kind of thing. But it all it all depends on you. Like sometimes I make decisions just based on aesthetics. That's all. Yeah, the the tier one plots are basically like a, a side job. When you upgrade to, um, I think it's tier two, you can make people artisans. Uh, and then if you upgrade their house to be a particular thing, like the here's the Fletcher shop. This is where we're making uh, bow and arrow. Uh, these people here work here the the whole time. They don't have any other job other than to work from home. And inside, you know, they live above, and then below is like the the Fletcher's workshop or whatever. So they live up here and then go down to work at the bottom. And then maybe there's like a little, maybe they do it in the back. I don't know, whatever. I like to think of it as them working in the bigger... If there's two families working, I assume that they work in the, the first floor. And uh, maybe out back in some other storage or whatever. I don't know. Maybe it's not traditional, but this is the way I think of it. Oh, it's pretty, though. Also, I'm really not sure how farming works in total. I've been trying to put more and more farmers on our farm just to make sure it's, like, getting done efficiently. But I don't know, like, what the limit is for farming. Um, Ostriv is a game that kind of does farming similar to this, too. O-S-T-R-I-V. It's uh, Ukrainian for island. And it's a game that I played long before this and long before Farthest Frontier, made by one dev from Ukraine. And uh, that dude is a champion and a genius, too. I think he deserves just as much praise as this guy. Now, there's not any warfare or whatnot in Ostriv yet. So, obviously, people kind of want this a little bit more for the medieval aspect. That game takes place in, like, the 1700s, and it's beautiful. Like, the, you could build, like, um, like, ro row house? I, I forget what they're... You could build, like, some larger, like, buildings that look like they're from the 1800s. And that, that game is gorgeous. Blacksmithing, fishing, building boats, building carts, all that stuff is very realistic. Uh, that game is more on, like, a smaller scale, like a... Like, the biggest town you can build in that game will look like this. But, of course, Manor Lords, you could do all that. So, it's a, it's, a, it's all about scale. But both are totally worth your time. And that game deserves an applause as well. I wish more people knew about Ostriv. The developer reached out to me. And I played it many, many years ago. And um, when I saw the, the seasonal transitions in that game, I was like, no way. We can actually do that now? Like, tech allows for that? There's no, like, city builders doing seasonal change before. So, love to see it. All right, how are we doing here? Food looking okay. Timber looking okay. Planks looking real good. Got a lot of planks stored up for upgrades. I think in this town, I think we will have. I, I think I want to ship honey and um, and apples back to the other town. Is this this is a good farming town, right? We got good good land. Oh yeah, it's real good for farming. So we'll probably do some farming up there. Although I don't really think we need to. I mean, just just because the land is fertile, I don't I don't think it means we need to farm. And we can get away with burgage plots and maybe a small farm. Yeah, Farthest Frontier does that as well. Good, great, uh, 
great uh, seasonal transitions in that game. First time you saw my face? Well, hello. You've been following for me for years. Awesome. Yeah, Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, I posted some really cool stuff of uh, or pictures of stuff that Manor Lords has sent me, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that they actually sent that. I was like, all right, this is uh, wow. This is way beyond what I was expecting any sort of dev to do or publisher. So they seriously went all in for this game. Number one wish list to game on Steam. Wow. Uh, do we build more houses? Yeah, we got 18 out of what? Seven? Eight? Eight. Yeah, exclamation point Instagram and Twitter. It's already linked in the Twitch chat. Hmm. Does that mean you yield more? Yeah, the burgage plots. Yeah, if you make a big... Uh, house for farming it, it will it will produce more like usually I'll make a house like this for farming I don't know why they didn't uh, feel could have been a little bigger but <laughs> regardless yeah the bigger the plot the better it is for farming but that seems to be the only one that's affected by size am I gonna do a, a, a helmet stream uh, maybe I actually have worn it but uh, kind of hard to hit the get the headphones in chat says to be cool hats all the time before the release of Manor Lords someone sent me a hat that's kind of like the the hat that the the Lord wears when you walk around in third person and I wore it and it worked out because it's like soft so it can kind of like you know it, it's like squishy you know but uh, kind of hard to uh, I, don't, I don't think medieval helmets were meant to f fit headphones in them so there's that oh wow regional wealth skyrocketing approval skyrocketing um Let's see. Oh, and we want to build a manor here, too. I, I guess we could do that already. If we build a manor... Damn, I wish I had a little bit more room. Maybe I could uh, build that there. <laughs> yeah, the Lord hat for me. We could uh, go cut down trees there. Are we making firewood here? Well, we got lots of firewood. But I want to cut those trees down. I was also trying to extend the town. I was basically going to build the town here. Farm here. And then maybe build a manor there. And hard to find open space. This area has a lot of trees. This is really good for logging. And firewood making. Oh, we have a trade post, too. Uh, we can get some horses ordered. Let me get a hitching post. And we can upgrade that to tier 2. Um, so, yeah, we got to cut those down. Damn it. All right, let's do some logging. And that firewood cutter's right there. All right, more people moving in. Fantastic. Kenny Loggins, exactly. You got to get this soon? Yeah, I, I hope you do. I hope you enjoy. Do you think there should be a rally all button for all the troops? That might be helpful, for sure. Yeah, I think there could be some more hotkeys and whatnot for that. 
I think this game, you know, the I thought the medieval combat was going to be way more complex, and it's not. And that doesn't make it simple, but it's just not unnecessary, confusing. Um, there are a few things, too, like, for example, um, you can make control groups for your troops. Like, I could deploy these troops and then hit control one, and then press one to control them. But if I double tap one, I wish the camera would zoom to them. Because sometimes I'll have my units, like, on the field going to fight bandits or something, and so... You know, it takes like a very long time to walk across the map. So while they're walking there, I'll go do some other, you know, I'll go do some building and management and whatnot. I mean, you know, it's a city builder after all. But then if I double tap one, like, you know, I've got them assigned to one now. But I wish if I double tapped one, I'd be like, well, where the hell are these troops? You know, I know that they're here in the in the manor, but if they were on the field, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, make sure you guys are reading the pin message on YouTube and also check that description. There's a FAQ for all things Manor Lords in there. And I'm trying to keep track of other good questions coming in um, that can have a quick, like, one, two-sentence answer. Otherwise, I'm going to throw everything into a big O tutorial for everybody. I want everybody. I, I think it is our responsibility as creators, uh, especially on YouTube with videos, to make very comprehensive and helpful videos for the newest of the new people to play this game. Because this is the most wish-listed game on Steam, I'm hoping that uh, this opens the door for other people playing games like Bell Rite, Farthest Frontier, um, hell, even old games like, um, do you guys remember um, Life is Feudal Forest Village? Even that game. Now, that, was, that was a city builder. Banished? Like maybe uh, there'll be a big Steam sale and Banished will go on sale for like 22 cents or something and people will play that. Or Ostrief, like I mentioned before. But this could be a great gateway game into all sorts of other management games even anno for example maybe someone will be like oh there's a game in the 1800 like there's there's people who probably have never even heard of anno yet and they game all the time so i'm hoping that this is just a, a stepping stone into other games i think that's a cool thing you couldn't stop playing farthest frontier yeah and that one should be releasing this year too so i want to see what the hell they got in store hell i haven't i played farthest frontier so much i haven't even done everything in that game either like, I still haven't made books, I still haven't made paper, I haven't even... I built a library, I don't even have it functioning yet. I mean, there's so much to do in that game. Like I said yesterday, Farthest Frontier is like gambling, you know? Like, every time that we go into a stream, it's like, alright guys, today we're gonna hit a population of 500, and then I, you know, I roll that dice, and then we go down to 472, and it's like, alright guys, next stream we're gonna get to 500. We go up to 482, 492, oh, invasion, back down to, four, oh, it's a bad invasion, down to 465. But by the end of the stream, we're back up to 82. <laughs> it's like, come on, one more, hit me. And then the damn raiders come again. I think the damn raiders in that game were a little overpowered. Like, somebody can literally take a, a direct crossbow hit to the chest like eight times. Like, come on, man. All right, two, two is enough. You did not know I was on Twitch? Yeah, I've been uh, streaming here for about... Um, I'm restreaming to YouTube and Twitch for about a, uh, about six months. Not, not six months, about four months now. I used to only stream on Twitch because YouTube didn't have it. And then, you know, the YouTube channel was getting much larger. So I was like, well, I'll just stream on YouTube too. And there wasn't really a restreaming option. So all the way through, you know... I kind of actually do wish I was streaming on Twitch... Uh, in 2020, but Twitch recently got rid of that dumb rule where there was like a Twitch exclusivity thing for partners and whatever, and even though I probably could have still done it because I wasn't a partner, it was just, it, would, it just turned me off. I was like, ah, you shouldn't have, shouldn't have exclusivity. The best, the best platform should win. It should be the same when you guys choose to buy stuff. Like, you know, if Epic has Manor Lords on sale for a dollar off, and uh, Steam has it for two more dollars, um, but you choose to get it on Steam, well then, you know, Steam has kind of earned your your loyalty and stuff. It's the better platform, where you prefer. So, I, that's my opinion. Is the, the, the better platform should just win. You know, where, where streamers prefer to go and where people prefer to watch, that should be, that should be the, you know, the determining factor. But that doesn't mean I don't want to stream on... Guys, I'd like to announce my partnership with uh, uh, Facebook Gaming and the, and the Zuck. That dude would have to pay me $50 million. I would need a personalized check from Mark Zuckerberg delivered to my house to even stream over on Facebook Gaming. I'm sure there's some great people over there. I'm, I'm sure there's some an amaz like amazing people streaming on Facebook Gaming, I'm sure. But, um, like, Facebook sucks. It's dead. It is so dead. The only thing keeping those people alive was in the Instagram purchase, let's be honest. Come on. Nobody cares. 
I'm sure some of you use it to keep in, in touch with family and stuff, but uh, it's not like, it's not hip and cool. MySpace is hipper and cooler than Facebook. Uh, why four hitching posts instead of a couple of stables? Because I didn't have planks to upgrade them. I do now, but uh, I built so many at the start because I, I had, uh, I had to get some for our uh, pack mules so I could transfer stuff back and forth, and then I got a couple of oxen. But now this little hitching post that I'm going to build down here, now I'll upgrade it. It takes uh, two planks to upgrade that. So at the beginning I didn't have those. I'll probably move them and delete them later. You know, there was a meme on uh, Twitch, too, by the way, a few years ago. Uh, what was it? Co Coke Gaming or something like that? Or Pepsi Gaming or whatever? Like, Coca-Cola had a Twitch stream, and they would, like, go to random streamers and drop big gift subs. And people would be like, oh, my God, Coke Gaming just dropped a 200 bomb. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then they would just record that and then do a, uh, a montage of Coca-Cola just dropping gift subs all over Twitch. What does the post do? Uh, you need It's like a parking lot for your oxen or your horse. They need a place to be tied up, otherwise they'll wander off. So it's basically a parking spot in between, like, using them. So when they're not, when they're not hauling logs, they go park over there. They're very easy to make, though. This is like one log. I've seen some of my favorite streamers go to Facebook Gaming, never seen them again. I mean, if the Zuck's going to, you know, cut a big enough check, it's certainly worth doing that, but I... I wouldn't see any real reason to go over there other than, you know, how big's the check, Zuck? Otherwise, I, yeah, I don't know. Jacob, thank you very much for the Bear Cub membership. Welcome aboard and good to see you. You heard Mountain Dew was targeting streamers early this year. I mean, they're, you know, they're welcome to come into the stream. Welcome aboard to Mountain Dew Gaming. Taste the Dew. <sighs> Side JB, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to you as well. I heard Facebook Gaming is in the best. There's only one person I've seen ever go over there, and I think it was um, Twitch streamer. I think his name is Goth Lion. And somehow I stumbled on his stream, and then I think I saw a Facebook link, and I went over there. Facebook streaming is wild, man. Instead of bits or like super chats, I think they have this system called stars or something. It's like with TikTok streaming. Like you can stream gaming on TikTok too. I mean, honestly, in 2024, I should be streaming everywhere. Because, you know, all these companies are just looking to screw over everybody just trying to like make some fun content and hang out with their audience and stuff. And they're like, oh, dude, more ads. More, dude, play more ads. It's like, dude, could you just shut up and like just like have some sustainability no dude we have to have a 200 and like 200 percent profit increase every year that means 7,000 percent more ads it's like dude that's never gonna work no one wants that dude everything's just you're just jumping from sink, sinking ship to sinking ship but anyway that's why uh you know you gotta go to you gotta stream on multiple places because none of them are the best anymore youtube was the best for long remember remember watching tv and then discovering youtube and be like whoa wait a minute hold on I can type in, like, uh, Battle of the Bulge and pull that up. So Someone put the History Channel full episode. Dude, the four-part episode of Battle of the Bulge, the Ardennes Offensive, is on YouTube, dude. That's not supposed to be on until Friday. I can watch it now? Holy crap. Like, a lot of people don't remember before On Demand. Like, On Demand, when YouTube was starting to do that, all the uh, TV companies started to do that, too. Like, vid video On Demand. Pull up your favorite movies. Now it's like a like you know, now it's like getting ice in your drink. You know, it's like <laughs> this is kind of a standard feature. Uh, Jacob Wolf, welcome aboard too. Wow, it's the day of the Jacobs. Uh, thank you very much for your Raptor Hatchling membership. I think Facebook has got goals and KPIs. I have no idea what the hell that is, but I don't know. Just wait until we get Apple Gaming or something. Apple will start wanting people to stream okay guys so we offer a really competitive platform we take 80% of all your earnings and then another 100% on top of that and here's your contract for indentured servitude and we own 
We'll be owning all of your property and personal goods and uh, agree to arbitration here, here, and here. Arbitration? What's that? Don't ask questions. Welcome to the team. Get into your hole. I got copyrighted on YouTube for having a Fallout music on a video where I played Fallout. YouTube's getting increasingly stupid. Yeah. Well, the rule is if you play, you know, this is why my streams are basically 5 hours and 55 minutes. Because I'd be playing this game all day, but if I go over 6 hours, I can't edit out a dumb copyrighted song that would play. This happened a few times now where uh, there's been random claims of songs that aren't even in this game. People have been trying to claim these streams. These corporations, you know, are like... Oh, dude, is that Eddie Van Halen uh, shredding the flute? Yeah, dude, I'm sure it is. Like, so I'll just, you know, if you ever hear a, a part of my streams that is muted, it's because there's just like BS abuse and claims that don't apply to the like. I'm I'm not sitting here playing like the Brady Bunch, and like you know reruns of Laverne and Shirley, and like uh, Metallica albums. I'm playing games, and so if 10 seconds of a copyrighted song plays in like a six-hour stream. YouTube, a billion dollar company with endless amounts of resources and funds, can't figure out how if you do over a six hour stream, they, they don't let you mute any sort of VODs. So whoever is doing a claim or a false claim gets to take all of that streamer's like earnings and stuff like that for that stream, which is abuse. And it's like, that's not right, but you can't dispute it because, you know, no one cares. At the top, it is. This shouldn't even be a worry or a concern, but this, this is why things have to be done in certain ways as workarounds. Instead of fixing the problem, let's just, uh, you know, work around it, which is ridiculous. So it's like if, if somebody says that 10 seconds of six hours, six hours of work. Oh, dude, that's mine now. Really? That's yours now? Hmm. Where's your proof? Oh, I don't have to provide any proof. I'm just going to make that claim. All right, then I'm just going to mute the damn song. So if you, so that's basically my best weapon against that. If, if we do a stream and then it goes muted for like uh, 30 seconds or a minute or something, it's because somebody made some BS claim and I just like not, not even gonna, not even going to argue. Just mute, just mute. And then what should happen? It does. It happens on Twitch, but it doesn't happen on YouTube. There should just be something on the screen that just says like, uh, due to our bull, our BS policies. Uh, this streamer has opted to remove the music rather than us to fix the problem. YouTube, we care. Also, have you heard of YouTube Shorts? Please, watch our shorts. Please, we're so desperate to beat TikTok. Please, please. We know you prefer it because we're getting worse, but please, please. Watch nine more videos of cats. Yeah, this uh, flute is definitely a, a Van Halen cover for sure. Sorry, I'm getting a little heated this morning. Sorry. But, it's, it, you know, when, when things aren't right and there's easy solutions, then that means that uh, they're aware of the problem and they just don't want to fix it. Game seems like Austria, but bigger, which is good. I agree. Yep. So, anyway. Like, somebody tried to claim that uh, a song that I played yesterday, and I was like, you're not getting it, pal. I know how this game is played. But, you know, it's like, um, the, the hilarious thing, too, sometimes is that uh, sometimes um, music rights will change hands. We'll all have, like, a video series from, like, 2012 up for, like, almost a decade. And then I'll just, my email will just explode one morning with, like, 19 emails from, like, uh, you know. Dude, Lego Adventures has claimed 19 of your your things or whatever they they now own this song it's like all right the video's deleted goodbye you don't get money off of it i don't get money off of it and it doesn't get promoted because you're being a f anyway welcome to the stream guys good to see you all here hope you're all doing uh well <laughs> love to hear your opinion well i mean it's not i don't even think it's my opinion is what's right i mean seriously it, just as just as much as you should return your GD shopping cart at the Costco because you walked seven miles around the store but don't have enough time to walk it across the parking lot to the other side to put it in there and how you bought the uh, you know $42,000 SUV but don't have uh, 
enough strength to depress a little lever that lets other people know that you'll be moving to another lane before you do that. Criminals. Those people are criminals. <laughs> I want them. I want them hunted down. I want to send out uh, Tommy Lee Jones to hunt these people down like a fugitive. Tommy Lee Jones, my kids were just getting off of soccer. I had to go, I don't care. And I want you to leap out of the drain pipe. Whoever that is. <laughs> I just want the... <laughs> oh, we're getting wild now. We're getting wild. I'm sorry. But anyway, I'm sorry. Fired up this morning. I had the... A little something extra in the tea this morning. My bad. I'm sorry. Anyway, let's build a medieval city, shall we? That's why we're here. Um, still get more people here, so we're going to have to wait on that one. I hope they don't push the launch date back again. Oh, no. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is like 99.9% .9 repeating. Going to come out on the 26th. I mean, they've kind of already locked it in. I think the developer honestly doesn't want to release the game at all. Like, wants to keep working on it, but... Now that he's got a publisher, and uh, the guy's got to eat, let's be honest. This dude has been working on this game part-time for seven years. This dude has done this as a side gig for seven years. And we'll see how part-time it is after uh, April 26th. I think this guy's going to be uh, living pretty uh, pretty happily. But good. Then this means he should be working from home all the time, making a really cool game. Like a really cool simulation of medieval warfare and farming and everything. I think it's great. This game has really made me want to go to Renaissance festivals all this year. I want to go around and go to like every Renaissance festival I can find. You're trying to keep the cart person employed. Those cart people don't even do that job either. They kind of they kind of come out every couple of hours and wrangle a few carts and then bring them all in. Yeah, one one dude pretty much made this game. There's a few things that. You, know, you didn't make the music, and you didn't make, like, all the voice acting and stuff. Like, not, like, to be completely fair, not one person made everything. But the game, you know, it. he's been the driving force, the, you know, working on all, all things. Picking the music. He's had his hand in everything. It's great. I mean, that makes for some extreme uh, quality control. But also... He, you know, very limited on the things that he could do in a certain amount of time. He could be the best programmer in the world or whatever. Still can only do so much a day. So but that's why it's taken seven years. Your views on mega corporations and why you're the best streamer out there? Yeah, well, because I have to deal with YouTube all the time. And YouTube is the same as Apple and it's the same as the IRS. They're all a bunch of, like, you know, they just sleep in all day, don't really contribute or do anything. But the moment somebody does something else, hey, I got to get on. Hey, what are you doing over there? Uh, being productive? Hey, hey, hey. You can't do that without giving me stuff. <laughs> what did you do? Exactly. All right, stop it, chat. Stop it. Stop it. You're firing me up. Stop it. How is it possible that one man did a game like this and Big Corpse can't? Well, because they're, you know, this guy is a gamer making a game for gamers. And uh, big publishers are uh, companies making products for consumers to generate revenue for shareholders. There's a difference. There's people who make games, and then there's companies who are there to fabricate products in order to, you know get you locked into Fortnite, get you locked into battle passes, and just get on the wheel. You, they just want you as a little hamster on the wheel. Just, hey, just keep playing. Just keep, come on, buy the next battle pass. And to be fair, Helldivers is kind of the same way, too. They got their little battle passes in, as well. But that's completely different. That's completely different. Like, when people look into things and they see the struggle and the passion, like, what the hell, Helldivers 2 came out of nowhere and exploded, and it was, like, you could, you could tell there was some passion there. But also, those developers keep tweeting, and same with Baldur's Gate 3, where it's like, we don't really want to do DLCs. If we do, we have to earn it. Like, we might make more content for the fans, and we have to charge for that because it did take time, and we want to pay our workers so they can feed their families and send their kids to school. Makes sense. Gladly would pay then. But, you know, I, I love it when these devs are coming out by saying, no, we're not, 
we we're, we didn't really have plans for that, but uh, we oop oh, oop oh, ac we accidentally were successful. Our bad. Um, we're gonna go ahead and make some more stuff for you guys. It'll take a bit. Hope you're patient. To that, we gotta defend that. Like anybody who's like mad about that, like you release it now. It's like quiet down. Let them take their damn time. That's why this game's good in the first place. But yeah. And I think that's the problem with City Skylines. That's why City Skylines was kind of... Uh, City Skylines 2. 0% do I blame the developers of that game. You can see that every time those people sit down for an interview, they're just fueled by passion. There's not like a guy with a gun off screen. Those guys like making that game. They, lo they love working for Colossal Order. Colossal Order's other games... If you haven't played their previous game before City Skylines, literally City Skylines, the original game, has assets in it, like churches and like um, a department store and stuff, from a previous game that they made called Cities in Motion. And I played that on the channel, like one of the first games I played on the channel. And that game is still fire. It's all about mass transit and just building bus stops. And, you know, it, it's all, obviously, City Skylines, the original, has a ton of, uh, uh oh has a ton of, uh... Oh, lol. Ah, don't worry, we'll take care of that. But anyway, uh, yeah, so, you know, City Skylines... is... the, the team behind that and the game franchise and everything to do with Colossal Order is perfectly, uh, passionate and whatnot. And I see a lot of good things in City Skylines, too, but I, I, I see a lot of things that were kind of tied off and, like, wrapped up quickly that weren't complete because I feel like they were told that they had to, had to hit a deadline because... Paradox had games like uh, Lamplighter's League and some other... Uh, there were some cool games that Paradox was publishing and they kind of just didn't resonate well and kind of fell flat. And, um, yeah. All right, we got an invasion coming in, folks. Looks like out of nowhere, the, the big corporations have shown up to shut me down. I'm doing too much yapping about them, so they've... Uh, <laughs> they're, they're sending out the Pinkertons to get that 16 tons again. Hmm. The rat's troops are attacking. Oh, dude. Yeah, that helmet that they sent me is totally what the rat wears. People were pointing that out. And I was like, oh, yeah, for sure. All right, we got... A, is that it? Just uh, about 20, 40, 60 dudes? Where's the flute guy to hype up the army? Well, we got chat to hype up the army. So now we're being invaded. This is fun. Okay, hold on, let's do a little focusing here. Oh, are they actually training? Oh, I thought they were troops like training. Um, all right, so we're gonna get you guys all pimped out now. So I've uh, made it so that way members of our chat uh, and subscribers and people who drop super chats are in that uh, in our army, but also we can get more troops. I just need to build a manor in this area. So that, that's why I'm cutting down all these trees because there's like, there's really no other room to build it. It's, it's all Treeville. So I'm gonna build a manor there and that'll give us 24 more. Paradox didn't market lamplighters enough, in my opinion. I feel the same. I played that game. Paradox paid me to do promotional tutorials for that game. And I thought that, ga that game was really cool. It was like Indiana Jones. It gave me that feeling. Plus XCOM, which is cool. I love those turn-based combat games like that. Like, throw a hundred at me. I love them all. I think they're really neat with the whole, like, Overwatch, toss a grenade. You know, he I love that. We played on stream even. Uh, it's good. It was fun. But it they were shafted, man. All right, enough of that. Let's get into uh, deploying the troops. But before we do, I think we could pimp everybody out, give everybody uh, upgraded armor. We don't have any plate mail, but we could spend 34 bucks per 24 people on upgrades. Oh, do we? Oh, it doesn't say how many they've defeated. Oh, does everybody get the same expertise, not based on kills, but based on battles won? Everybody's got 39 out of 1,000. Oh. Anyway, here's all you guys. Um, Let's see. I think I'm going to armor everybody up. Oh, yeah, look at that. Getting pimped out. There's the helmet I got. Well, kind of. Close. Damn, look at that. Also, you can give them different armor, too. Uh, 
That's pretty sweet. Very expensive, but... Uh, and you know another great thing about this game, too, is that we could tax each individual region as well. So if we have two really thriving cities, we can basically double our income, and we wouldn't have to even worry about making stuff. We could just buy stuff. This is what you call, uh... We're pay to win right now. Dude, this dev has made his game pay to win. Yo, Tricky48, thank you very much for the 10, dude. Requesting a spot in the army. Hell oh, yeah, brother. Glory to Raptor. Yeah, when I can recruit, uh, I can only have 24 at the moment, but I can recruit more if I get that manor built at the other spot and build that garrison tower. So we, we could try to get some more people in. Absolutely. Yeah, changing everything here is just cosmetic. I think in the future it would be cool if we actually had to have these shields. Like, ho hopefully in the future, um, it'll be based on, like, what you've produced. That would be really cool. I'd like that. I'd like that a lot. Yo, Rex. Thank you very much for your uh, 10 as well, dude. Appreciate it. All right, we got everybody fully pimped out. Let's go ahead and get out there to the battle. Now, 24 versus 60. I don't know if we're going to win, but I think we should... Uh, we can call up the militia, too. When are they attacking? July? All right. Let's call up the militia as well. Holy hell. We have 53 pole arms? Oh, wow. Uh, let's get those troops deployed. And let's get some spearmen, too. Okay. No, 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 don't run. Just walk, just walk. They're coming to us. We'll just chill. I really wish I could find a way to. Uh, I want to. I want to get archers and uh, put 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 them in training. I, I want some elite archers. And see how effective they could be. Thanks again, Rex. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for all the big O super chats. Glory to Raptoria. My halberd is yours to command. Why no archers? You know what I found out in this game? The archers are incredible at melee. I feel like it m might actually be broken. In fact, that was the unit we lost to the other day. We were, uh, we had some units that were attacking a group of archers, and I've also had archers attack before too, to where the archers will let loose maybe like two volleys of arrows, hit nothing, and then the enemy will smash into them, and then they're very good melee fighters, and it's weird. They'll take some losses, of course, because they don't have shields. But it's very weird at how effective they are. No running, just walk. We're good. Yeah, we got some time before they get here. 20, 40, 60. Oh, it is 80. 80 troops are attacking. Well, we're about to have some dead bodies. Now let's pause, because this is really cool. Got to take some pictures. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's cool. The devs certainly nailed the vibe. 
Yeah, that, that's thumbnail tier right there. Yep. Same with this. Now, if only we could get the troops to, like, march on roads and stuff, that'd be really cool. One of my things that I was mentioning is when you... When you have your army that's kind of just marching across the map, it would be cool if there was just an auto stick to King's Road. Because there's a, there's a road that goes across the whole map called the King's Road. And, um... It'd be cool if you could stick to that. All right, battle time. Yeah, it'd be cool if they could march a little faster on the road, but also they didn't, like, get fatigued. So it'd be, like, twofold. It'd be, like, they march fast and less fatigue. This is going to be cool. <laughs> I'm surprised so many outlaws got it organized. Okay. Standing by. Damn, I could send out another group. But, uh, I'm Gucci fam. Does the ambush work? I've seen some sort of, like, stealth mechanic and ambushing kind of thing work with archers, but I don't know how, because I've seen archers standing in the middle of the field, and then they kind of, like, get a little... There's, like, an eye with, like, a slash root, meaning, like, I don't know, they're hidden or something but they're in the fi they're in a field like they're standing in the open so i don't i don't know what that means yeah sieges and trebuchets that'll be years down the line but you know manor lords is here to stay I'm, people are going to be fascinated by the development of this one like this game chat has made me want to leave the house and go to a renaissance festival i know i know where the hell are these guys going Oh, see, there was a group that went into the woods, so now we can't see them. Which is weird, because you can see them when they're on the map, marching the whole way across. That's only 60. There's a gr That group of 20 is in there somewhere. Oh, they're heading to the middle. They're heading to the Raptorian Guard. Those guys are dead. They're dead. Circle behind the boys. Take some pictures here because this is sweet.
Damn, look at these battles, bro. Oh, they're bailing. It's over. I'd like to uh, inform everyone that I do not think we have taken a single loss. Nobody has died. We did it. Enemy unit has been spotted. Wait. Where? I, I think I think we won. Okay, cool, we got him. Music changed, so I'm pretty sure we killed everybody. Not a single loss. Nobody. Nobody died. Good work. Everybody stand down and RTB. All right, good job, everybody. Everybody head home. Nice work. Can you capture troops like Bannerlord? Uh, there's nothing in like that at the moment, but that would be cool if there were people you could like get to fight for you. So there were only 80 units that attacked. Two attacked in the middle. That's 40. Then there was a group here. That's 60. And then another group came through here. That was 80. There were no other troops on the screen. We did it. And now everybody's gonna having some post battle high fives. All right, we gotta get somebody working at the old corpse pit. Take care of the trash. Good job. Wow, not a single loss. Feels good. Yeah, no orbital strike was required. Yeah, yield corpse pit, that's right. Still don't know why we're getting these problems. These, these problems seem to solve themselves. I, I don't know what this means. We tried to look into this last night, but yeah, I don't know. Glad to see you're back at it. Well, welcome back. Hand, thank you very much. Hand Midas for the uh, Raptor Egg membership. Thank you very much for hitting that join button. Enjoy those uh, flute emotes, king emotes. And pretty good favorites in there. Dude, we have so much regional wealth. I mean, uh, treasury wealth. Crazy. You know, we could probably slow down this town's growth a little bit now. Maybe up the taxes a little bit to lower the... Slow down the growth rate a little bit. Yeah, we got two towns rolling. Yep. Yeah, Pirates... Uh, Republic of Pirates is coming out. Yeah. I saw the trailer on that one. I think that was uh, Games... Summer Games Fest last year we heard about that. Looks fun. Oh, there's also a, 
a Cthulhu city builder coming out called, I think, Cult of Cthulhu or something like that. No, Worshippers. I think it's Worshippers of Cthulhu. <laughs> so there's a really cool, uh, like, dark, gritty Cthulhu city builder coming out. And, chat, today we get to take a look at Frostpunk 2. Frostpunk 2's beta is out today. Just released. I've already played it. I've got a video locked in and ready to go. And uh, we're going to have to stream the beta because the uh, the beta is um, quite big. So there's certainly not enough time to cover it in a video. Uh, maximum towns are kind of per region. Like you could build, you, if you capture a region, you could build in every, every region. So I guess nine. Although you can kind of build towns that are disconnected from towns that you could say is another town. Like technically I could build like a little, I don't know, village or something down here and say it's its own town. So, like you build everywhere in the map. Didn't we grow a ton of wheat last year? We're growing a ton of wheat again this year. And here. Where we're growing so much wheat and barley. Damn, that looks cool. Those farm fields look amazing. Yeah, millennia videos on the channel, yep. Uh, the game's missing many things like farms and horses, cow and sheep. Well, sheeps are in the game. Farms, we're literally looking at a farm. And horses are in the game, too, for merchants. You can buy them over here at the Trade Depot. But I agree, cows should be in the game, and I'm sure cows and pigs and other things will eventually be added. I think they were in the demo and cheese making, too, but I can't recall. At least people said that. But it's been two years, so I don't remember. Did the dev produce his own music? No, but there, if you go to Manor Lords' official YouTube channel, there's like a 10-minute video on the making of the music for Manor Lords. And there is a beautiful... It's a beautiful video. And there's like a, a whole orchestra. And they had like... They had an orchestra make music, and then they kind of had like individuals like... They had smaller groups of like one or two people make music to kind of simulate like when your town's small. And then more grand soundtrack when there's like big battles to which we're burying those bodies now I was gonna this is gonna take some time but uh, yeah the dev uh, gave a ton of feedback on the music and hopefully there's more songs too soon what's up Minith? welcome back yeah I think there'll be modding but it'll be closer to the devs probably not going to be able to support modding until he completes the main game, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, fishing, exactly, yeah. I think there'll be a lot more in the game. Like, right now there is water, and it's basically just this. It's like a little stream, and that's about all for now, which apparently goes uphill. <laughs> it's like a, a water flume ride. Oh, there was cows in the demo? Okay. Yeah, the game still has sheep, and there's pastures for them, but uh, I haven't even I haven't even bothered with the sheep because they give wool, and I get enough material from flax and uh, leather from hunting. So, that's fine. I'm trying to get the population of this town up a little bit more, though. I did, uh, by the way, make an FAQ for the comments section on YouTube. So for a lot of you guys, um, I've been seeing a lot of the same questions, which is good, which I can address with the FAQ in the description. And then I'm also going to make some tutorials on... For things that aren't necessarily in the game yet, I put an FAQ answering if it will be in the game or not, and if so, when. And then in the... Um, Uh, in the video sections, I'll make tutorials on how to do certain things when we get a chance to learn them. Uh, greetings from Sweden. Hey, Asvadia, Velkom, and uh, Marcus. Hey, how am I doing? 
A jdu pro? Jo, jdu pro. Jo, jo. Jo, jo, let's go. Game is so gorgeous, I know. I know. Uh, what are we trying to do here? Uh, why you don't make series in the game? Uh, I do have a series on the channel. We have a series, a uh, video series. I've been making a video every day since we were allowed to since Friday. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday have videos up. Today I'm going to put up a video on Frostpunk, but then again tomorrow we're going to make another Manor Lords video. And, um... Yeah, 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 tell us fans, Um, but, um, we're going to be stream. This, this is basically a series here. We're streaming, like, day and night, every day, till like, the, uh, first of, uh, of May. Question marks in chat. Lol. Ingleska. The uh, church is the only thing giving us prosperity right now. Um. Did wait? Did we build the uh, buildings? Oh, we did. Okay. Uh, let's go hunting and foraging. And then are we logging? And uh, we'll pull back to one. Oh, and let's upgrade this to tier two. Upgrade the stables. We'll get some more oxen, but we need more people. Yes, and you're good at it, one. Minsvenska? Am I going to be streaming Frostpunk 2? Not today, but tomorrow. Today I'm going to put up a video, and then tomorrow I'll stream it. My video is kind of more like a first look reaction, explaining how things are going to work. I'm going to tell you guys, I think a lot of people are, are not going to like Frostpunk 2. And not because it's a bad game, but because it's very different from the first game. Uh, it's very much political. Um, trying to appease the different like ideologies of people in the game. And it plays a lot more like Civ. In other words, do you remember how Frostpunk was basically like, you kind of managed the small city, and then there was the world map? Well, in Frostpunk 2, it's kind of like you're... It's like you're somewhere between the two. You're not necessarily managing a world map, but you are. But you're not necessarily managing a small city. Uh, you're, you're managing a huge empire. It's not a city builder, it's kind of more of an empire builder in a way. But to do that, you're building cities, you see. But uh, it's hard to explain. I think people aren't going to like it because it's different. Uh, but to me, I think to myself, I don't know what else they could have done. I mean, they literally could have made Frostpunk Part 2, like more of the same... But I think they're rolling the dice here, and it's interesting. And I want to I want to play the story mode. the The beta that we're going to play only showcases like uh, the the city building part, none of the story. And uh, I think beyond anything, Frostpunk's story and like the, the the setting and the story they tried to tell in Frostpunk was the that was like the top tier. Like the the city building's amazing. The brutality of all right, hey, it's your first day here. You want to do child labor, or should we start eating corpses? Like, the game literally, like, some of the first laws you can pick are like, you know, do we start turning to alternative food sources, or do you want to get the kids start, uh, get them working in the deep, uh, coal mine? <laughs> like, the game really goes hard right at the start. I mean, it's very brutal and hardcore. Like, negative 100 degree temperatures, uh, throwing the kids in the salt mines. I mean, it, it goes all in. Crazy. And then all on top of that is all the cool, like, you know, building mechanics and stuff, so, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, this game is made by one guy, for the most part, yeah. By the way, to get into that Frostpunk 2 beta, um, you have to pre-order the Deluxe Edition, so technically it's a $70 beta. Yeah.
And I don't know why they did that, because honestly, I think a lot of people would have liked the uh, the thing. But they're trying, you know, they got to do what the companies do, though. They got to get the wish list up. They got to get the pre-orders up. That's how the game is played. Pre-orders and uh, and wish lists are everything for the shareholder. I think 11-Bit's afraid that they're going to lose money on Frostpunk. Uh, Fro people are going to be pissed. There's going to be... I can hear the diapers being filled now across the internet of people not liking Frostpunk 2 for what, it, what it's going to try to be. But I admire the fact that they're rolling the dice. And to me, that's cool. All right, we got to get some more food going. So I'm doing foraging and um, foraging and hunting. So we're gonna get um, vegetables and eggs, but we're, meat and berries will be coming in now too. Oh, good, and another family dropping in. Cool. When you're here, your family. All right, there. We'll get the food numbers up a little bit. Yeah, you're completely uh, right. Like, I, I don't think they could have made any version of Frostpunk 2 that wouldn't have... Um, I mean, they had... Frostpunk 2, 1 was so different. Like, wait a minute. You get to build this tiny city and it's all frozen? Like, that doesn't sound fun. Like, you don't get to really... Oh. Oh. Oh, it's... It is fun. We're still playing through Frostpunk 1 as well before Frostpunk 2 comes out. I'm on the refugee scenario, and my god, I can't... I've, I'm have i pretty good at that game. Like, the main scenario and the arcs went really well, but the refugee scenario and I think the winter home one are, like, the, the hardest. Like, they're the worst. Where they they just make it... The, the scenario by default is just mean. Can you reimburse a pre-order game? Yes. If you can do it at a full game and play less than two hours, you should be able to do that as well yeah exactly well you can pre-order the beta to get you could pre you could pre-order the deluxe edition to get into the beta and if you hate it then you return like you cancel your pre-order and that's it i think they're just hoping a lot of people will pre-order enjoy the beta and then yeah but i, I think the real way to do this is not they should have just made it a, a demo they really should have just did this whole like demo now and then when people complain about something you fix it it's like what uh <laughs> It's like what Homeworld did. Homeworld 3 would have been out by now, but people were real mad. So they they went back in to change stuff. And uh, I liked Homeworld 3, though, but I only got to play the demo. But I loved the Deserts of Karak. Oh, my God. Like, Homeworld's good, but for whatever reason, to me, Deserts of Karak is like Dune meets Homeworld in many ways. And I was like, wow, I freaking love Deserts of Karak. What are things you want to see added to the game from the dev in the future? Hey, Jacob, thanks for the... The, tw the 20,000, dude. Appreciate the big O 20,000. <laughs> anyway, um, in the future, yeah. Um, you know what my biggest thing is for any of these games recently? Is I want to see, and that might not be a thing in the mid eight, the middle uh, ages like this, but I would love to see a coastline with boats and ships. Maybe not so much in the medieval times, but certainly from like farthest frontier I'd like to see that. I want to see some more. I want to see some river traffic and boat trade. I'm su I'm sure some people will say like, "Oh, that's just like banished." But I'd love to see that. I'd love to see something more to do with water in the game, like having a water wheel for a mill or for um, like a smithy or something. Like I'd love to see some things built on a river and on a lake. Fishing and and more things to do with water would be really cool. Making water an obstacle as well would be very interesting, because if you if you put a big old lake in the middle of the map, then, you know, troop, troop movements would have to be a little different. Be interesting to see. Workers of Resources, Soviet Republic. Great game. Great game. Was there Manor Lords key giveaways on Discord? Not yet. Uh, the developers did send me something really cool. Exclamation point Instagram, exclamation point Twitter to see that. And I was hoping that they would send a little card with some keys in it, but they didn't. But I will, I'll ask, I'll, I'll reach out and ask them if they uh, want to collaborate on a key giveaway. And uh, I'll try to get you guys the game before the game comes out. A, a moonshiner shack on the river, yeah. Deserts of Karak is your favorite homeworld game? It's a good one. It's really neat. Very different.
I love the discovery in that game. Like they're, like they're discovering the, like the origin. It's fascinating. Okay, we got another free person here. Um, we got a lot of money too. Who we start importing? Uh, I'd have to buy a horse, of course, of course. Oh, we haven't even upgraded the stables. All right, that one needs a little bit more time. And we're mining. How are we doing on mining? I guess we'll get a couple people mining. Iron ore is at five, slabs are at zero. Okay, I got as many people as I can smelting iron. Bridge battles would be sick. Yeah, that would be interesting because then you'd have some choke points. Or at least if there was a narrow river crossing where it was only shallow in one area, that makes for some really interesting defenses where you could hold... You could have a superior force try to come across that river and you could hold the other side because they have to go through a choke point. What's up, Torque? Welcome to the stream, dude. Yes, indeed. Hmm. And bridges in total war, war were OP, yeah. Let's see. Okay. What time is it in my country? Uh, it's Miller time. No, it's, uh, it's about 9.40 in the morning for me. Yeah, we'll be playing Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yeah, I like this game a lot. I did promise Chad to play Kingdom Come Deliverance. In fact, the developers of Kingdom Come were watching me play, like, Farthest Frontier, and they were like, you were entertaining, dude. Here, here's a key for Kingdom Come Deliverance. And I was like, what the hell? Those dudes are so nice, they just like sent an email. They were like, hey man, we were watching your stream on this other game. Uh, if you want to play our game, here you go. Because people in the chat were mentioning Kingdom Come Deliverance, and they were like, yeah, that, that game's cool, you should play that. And like literally the dudes from Kingdom Come Deliverance were watching my stream, and then they emailed me and gave me a key. <laughs> I was like, wow. So I haven't had a chance yet to play it, but it's on my list. I'm, I'm definitely going to do that. I hear good things about that one, though. I, I know it's good. Oh, didn't they confirm? Are they, are they making a second game? Like, is it confirmed? I heard, like, root, like people talking about it. I think, is it called just Kingdom Come 2? I don't know if it's confirmed or not. I, I don't know anything about it. But I'm a, I'm a fan of, like... I haven't played that game at all, but I know I'm a fan of it because I've seen some, like, small clips and stuff, and I'm like, this this looks good. Like, this this looks like something I would enjoy. So I'm a big fan of things that I haven't yet tried, but yet I'd, you know, I think I'd enjoy. This kingdom comes also from... No, no, a, a different developer worked on that game. I, I don't know where that... I think it was maybe the Czech Republic. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know much about it. All Other than that, it's cool. And I'll, I want to play it. <laughs> you can spend hours in the woods hunting in Kingdom Come. Oh, really? Alright. It sounds like a game that people enjoyed at the beginning of its launch, but it's a game that seems like more and more people are playing it since it came out. I feel that way about so many games on Steam where they launch, and they're pretty good and people like them, but then very slowly they, they start to grow on people and get a real big following. Like My Summer Car was like that. People are like, this game looks bad. And it, it is a 
It is kind of a purposely janky design game, but that's its genius. Uh, my summer car is like perfect. You think to yourself, like, wow, this like looks like it. This game's gonna crash in any second. Genius, game's genius. Thank you very much, uh, Torque, for the Twitch Prime sub as well. Thank you very much. It's very nice. Just modern day word of mouth, yeah. All right, what are we gonna focus on here now? Uh, we got tons of cash. We could press claims to another territory, but I feel like I want to already build up one town at a time. Or one new town at a time. Housing for 18, we got 11. Alright, we might want to expand. Let's do a quick check here on things. Oh no. No peachy. Don't like it. <laughs> pra uh, no, more like a Pravdu Dobre. That's better. Alright, what are we doing for eggs? Eggs are zeroed out, okay. Uh, let me build a couple of chicken farms here. That one too. I see a lot of people talking good good stuff about Kingdom Come in the chat. That's good. I also like it when a game starts out pretty good and the developers drop the game and they're like, yeah, this is pretty good. And then they just keep working on, like, they get user feedback and quality of life improve, and then it just keeps getting better and better and better. This is the best story ever where a game is good and then becomes real good. Because then it gets out there in the, uh, the real world and then gets to be tailored towards everybody's... Uh, Experiences. Hell, every game's done that. Even Baldur's Gate and Elden Ring are better because of player feedback and developers listening, being like, oh, they want us to add these things. Let's do that. Raptor just screams Texan to me? No, no, Minnesota. Kind of the uh, opposite, you know? Texas is at the bottom. I'm, I'm up there by Canada there, guy. Will I play Elden Ring? Maybe. She Fox wants to play with me, but... Um, if I... If I start games like that, I don't want to... You know, I, I want to finish some more games. We're still working on uh, uh, The Last Train Home. That Czechoslovak um, World War One game where we got to go across all of Russia to get to... Uh, um, Vladivostok and go home. It's a damn good game, though. Is there a peaceful mode to this game? Good question. I'm going to put that in the list. Yes, there is. There is definitely a way to play this game without combat. Let me uh, put that on my FAQ. Thank you for asking. I'm trying to like make a big FAQ I can put in the description to be as helpful as possible to people. And uh, that is that is a good question. Cheese curds out that way are top tier. Yeah. You just left the Mall of America. Yeah, I, I saw a video on YouTube the other day of, like, Mall of America 94. God, there was so much less clutter. Now Mall of America is, like, surrounded by a wall of, like, hotels and stuff because it's connected to the airport via light rail. And people will go from the airport and they'll take the light rail for about maybe a 10-minute ride to the mall, go walk around, and then come back to that. See, Minnesota is called the Gopher State. Yeah, also the land of 10,000 lakes. And uh, the land of Leif Erikson, too. We have Leif Erikson days. Which is cool. Yeah, our treasury is thick. I have, like, I'm running out of things to spend money on. Like, money is not a problem for us anymore. I've made 14000 here. I don't even know how I'm making money here. I'm not even trading. Oh, it's because I think we're raiding bandit camps now. Make, raiding those damn bandit camps is such a good way to make money. Really. Didn't get to try the booyah stew. Never heard of that. And hot dish. Hot dish, we do that. Yeah, instead of a casserole, we... Oh, you betcha. Tater tot hot dish. That's our thing. 
Where's the FAQ going to be published? It's in the description. Can you trade goods between cities without gold? Yeah, uh, you have to build these things called... And I, I don't like this. I, I want this to be different, in my opinion. Uh, you can build a structure called the... Um, it's called the pack station. So basically, you get a pack mule, and you can trade one good at a time. So you, you hire a guy, and you hire like a couple of uh, mules, and you can transport things back and forth. So... Right now, I'm trading... You, you have to trade two goods. So, if you have your main city, which is full of, like, roof tiles, for example... I'm, I'm going to try to bring roof tiles here, which are made from clay. So, I have to... So, I've ordered roof tiles to be delivered to this town via pack mule. Only one thing can be delivered at a time. You can't, like, make a whole list of things or what... I, I think it could be done differently. But you also have to export something. You can't just take. You also have to give... So I'm giving back firewood to the other city. But I can't really control, like, the the amounts or anything like that. So things are just kind of happening automatically. And I, I wish there was more of a control where I could, like, load up a wagon and just do, like, a big one-time delivery or something like that. So I, I wish that were a little different. And I don't like how I have to give something back to the other city. It's like, these people have nothing. Like, they're, they're just starting their city. Like, you know, we want to bring all the stuff to them to, like, solidify the region. So it's like, why the hell can't we just... You know, we got... There's nothing this town needs, is what I'm saying. So, like, we should be able to give everything to this town so they can grow up and be big and strong and get that damn manor built so we can get more troops. Tell us more about the hot dish. All right, well, uh... I think Tater Tot Hot Dish in Minnesota is based on some Swedish and Norwegian recipes, but essentially it's like shepherd's pie and minus the, uh... You know, minus, um... Was it sheep? Uh, it's actually made with ground beef. And I think it's a World War II thing. So a lot of Lutheran churches in World War II would share a lot of recipes because there were obviously sh supply shortages. And so they were trying to find things that they could make um, food out of. And I, I think... Um, I, don't, I don't know how they used to make it, but uh, essentially the recipe evolved to just basically be like a big old bag of tater tot. It's like a, it's like a lasagna. Or, well, like a casserole, but we call it hot dish. So you basically take, um, uh, you, you know, you put you put tater tots on the on the top of this thing, but, but below that, you take, like, cream of chicken or cream of mushroom or some sort of mix of both, and also mixed vegetables, and you put that in there as well. So you got your, your cream, your chicken and mushroom, um, and then, like, vegetables, and then on top of that is, is potatoes. So it's kind of like a, 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 yeah, it's like a cottage pie, exactly. So it's, um, so if you've heard of shepherd's pie, cottage pie is the same thing, but it's made of beef. And then people will put beef or chicken in there, too. And it's good. It's a really good thing. Yeah, la yeah there you go. Lamb is in shepherd's pie. So shepherd's pie and cottage pie are the same thing, except the difference is the meat. And then a uh, tater tot hot dish is a little different, because it's not necessarily, uh, mashed potatoes, but walleye fish fry. I've done that before. I've caught my own fish and uh, skinned and <laughs> I can't believe I did that stuff when I was younger. I, I uh, would, you know, gut the fish right there and then we'd uh, have ourselves a fish fry. No beef? No, I like mine with beef. Um, but I've done chicken before and a little paprika. It's just, it's, it's good too. You Americans do weird things to potatoes. Potatoes are great, man. It's very versatile. It's like chicken. A lot of things you can do with chicken, too. That's called tater casserole where I'm from. Yeah. I don't know why it's such a popular thing and, and considered to be Minnesotan because it's not very complex. And it existed elsewhere. It's like how the Danes stole a Danish. A Danish technically isn't from Denmark. I think it's an Italian pastry that... Um, that uh, Denmark, I don't know, so, some, something to do with Italy and Denmark doing something, and bakers from De Italy went to Denmark, and they taught them the recipe, and now, now they just basically stole it. They didn't really steal it, but you know what I mean. Like, some things just get, wor you know, laundromat and Kleenex are words that we use sometimes that are actual brand names. You know how it is. 
standard British weather. Thing. Yeah, dude, it's rained so much in my game. It rains, like, in the spring, and then, like, June and July are dry, and then August, September, October, November, it rains, and then it snows in December. Uh, there are cavalry in the game planned in the future, but not at the moment. Not in this early access version. Gumbo and Cowboy Stew. Gumbo is good. I like uh, dirty rice and um, jambalaya the most, I think. I actually recently had jambalaya. I like making that. Yeah, Q-tips. Yeah, exactly. Like, go grab a Q-tip. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are brand names that we just say. Okay, are we... Alright, we're at 1 out of 10. Happiness is at 68%. Alright, I think we gotta get up to 75% to get two families a month, I think it is. And we've expanded housing to almost 20. Good. Good to see you back, Uthras. Hope everything is well. Chicken wild rice soup. Oh, that is dank as hell. Chicken wild rice is, uh, yeah. Actually, I feel like, that, yeah. My, uh... I've had several family members work with Native Americans to go to places and, and help them to gather wild rice for, like, export. Like, they would gather enough wild rice to feed themselves for the winter, and then they would um, make their own wild rice recipes and ship it out to local markets and stuff like that. Very interesting. And a, and a very damn good rice. Wild rice is just like rice is good, but wild rice. I don't know. I don't know why that's so different. It's wild, man. Wild rice has this weird, almost like a like a baked taste to it. Yeah, wild rice is wild, man. It's got like a sm not smoky. I don't. I don't know what you would call it. A little bit. Yeah, it's got like a smoky taste to it, but that's not the right word. I don't know how you would describe wild rice like that. But like locally, like, you know, I make that joke all the time about locally sourced, but I mean, you know, if you get wild rice that is grown and harvested by a person, then you just buy it. I, I don't know. It's crazy. It's good. Earthy? N nutty. Yeah, it's a little nutty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wild rice and chicken. Oh my god, wild rice just like adds so much flavor to that chicken. My god. You been in the Netherlands? Did you have nasi? Technically, that is baked rice. Um, I don't think so, but I've had stamp pot. I like that, and of course stroopwafel. But I don't, I don't think I've had that yet. David, thanks for the five, dude. Uh oh. Do you know if they plan to make the map bigger with more lords? Uh, so I think the plan for the map is I don't think this map will get bigger, but m like maybe it will. Maybe the developer will add more areas to it, but there will be more maps. So maybe in the future there'll be big and small maps to change the length of the game. So that way you could either have like a huge conquest or you could kind of keep it smaller if you don't really feel like investing, you know, you're. You, you only feel like investing three weeks of your time, you know, a short game. <laughs> um, but will there be more lords? I think that could be pretty easy. All, all, the lord, all the enemy lord is is basically just a portrait and some writing. But um, I, would, I would love it if... Uh, nah. I was going to say, I would love it if he put in stuff like in Stronghold, where like the rat and the snake and the, the wolf will talk to you, but... That's like uniquely a stronghold thing. I think it would work in this game, though. If the, uh, at least if the Lord would read to you, the enemy Lord, it'd be cool. You've been impressed by the realism of the game? Yeah, the, the weather and the immersion of the landscape are beautiful. But it still takes time to walk across the map. Like, it takes a long time to get up here. But I think here's here's my thought, right? Because we don't have cavalry at the more moment, the developer didn't want players to have to endlessly walk without horseback for a very long time. 
So I think when cavalry is added later and people can go further, or your militaries can go further faster, I think the developer will add a big map so that way, you know, cavalry and troops can all go together. And then, you know, you'd, it'll still take a very long time, but of course you'll have your troops somewhere and then the cavalry can be off to the side and then rush in later. It'll make the, the battles a little bit bigger. What is this? Work area is empty for what? Oh, the oh the forager is shutting down for the year. Got it. But that one's still good to go. Well, this one can hire more people. Uh, yeah, the wolf's grunts, yeah. Wall building? Uh, there is an FAQ in the description for this about defenses and stuff. So check that description. A little more detail on that one. Oh. All right. Should I have called this New Raptoria? I called it Fritzburg in, honest, uh, in uh, honor of our ox. Fritz from the very first uh, demo. They said this game was going to be like Total War. Uh, it's closer to Total War in, a co in combat than anything else. But it's very much its own thing. But if you had to compare, you know, people often ask, is it like Total War? It's like, it, it, you know, that's the closest thing, yeah. It's different. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me try something here. Let me try something, hold on. There is a... Uh, a version change in the game. Let me just, um, I got, I got an email about a different version of the game. Let me just see if I can pull that up. Um, oh, that's interesting. Why is that not? Okay, hold on. We're getting a Manor Lords live update. Which I hope doesn't break any of our saves, but we'll see. So stand by. Uh, if you click on a Burgage and click People sub tab, then you can still edit their name. Oh yeah, the name editing in this game is kind of weird. Um, I also want to be able to edit the name of buildings and stuff too, and like be able to name our taverns and stuff. All right, stand by. I'm just downloading a quick little uh, cha like update to the game. They changed some stuff, and since it's like not released yet, there's not like a public. Uh, Steam notice for it or something. So stand by. 
Yeah, the, sa the map is always the same, but your starting point and the resources on the map will always be different or randomized. So that's kind of cool. Alright, let's see how this works. Alright, we're leaping back in. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see if this works. Well, I can hear it. Let's try this. Uh, hey, there we go. Oh, crap. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> Alt F4, yeah. Always copy the save before update. Uh, I think the saves are fine. I think there's just a version mismatch here. This is still an early access version, but the numbers change. So either it has broken a link between the previous saves, or so much has changed that uh, they want us to start over. <laughs> Wait, let's see the credits for Manor Lords. Should just say Greg. Oh, there you go, that's it. Oh, there you go. So a few other people worked on the programming. Animations, 3D art, mostly Greg. Motion capture. Oh, yeah, the artwork in the background. Wow, a lot of people worked on illustrations. Oh, there's your voice acting. Somebody named Pressure Cooker? Wait, am I in here? Oh, a lot of people worked on this game. Like Japanese localization, Korean. Translating all the current text into those languages. All right, well, it goes on and on. All right, boys. Uh, big update to Manor Lords then. Um, couple things. One, we could roll back and continue on where we were. But I feel like it's a probably a better idea to use the version that's more than likely going to be updated between now and release. And we could start new. And then I've got to answer the question. Did you start a new game? Why is the map? Dude, did you? Oh, God. Uh, now i got to deal with that for the next week and a half. Let's see what's new. Yeah, we could do that. And it might not even be anything that like we see that's new. It could just all be back-end functioning stuff. Are there patch notes? No, because it's not like a public Steam release yet, so they haven't like put patch notes in for an unreleased game. They're basically putting out an APB saying that there's a different version now that we should use. 
And I certainly want to use the version that they want us to use, so I don't... Yeah. Hmm. All right, well, uh, let's go ahead and start a new game then. So, uh, hold on. All right, guys, welcome <laughs> to a new game called Manor, <laughs> Manor Lords version... It's a completely different game. Uh, version 107302090210. Okay, uh, I guess we're going to have to start a new game. I'm, I'm not even mad, honestly. Um, I think we could build a better city faster than before. And this is something I was kind of wanting to do before release. And the game will come out in about 11 days. So Now, before in this game, we've played the... We've done a little bit of prosperity, but I wanted bandits on the map. But bandits are a little easy to clap cheeks on. Restoring the piece is the main game mode, and I kind of like that one. And then on the edge doesn't seem to have that final... Lord? This one is basically the first one, but with bandits and stuff. It's like, build a large town, but also you'd be constantly attacked. I, th I think we're going to go down restoring the peace, and we're going to change some things a little bit. Wait, AI opponent. Oh, it's probably just locked. Off-map adversary. Reactive. AI lords don't press claims towards the player's regions, but they will protect their own. AI lords may press a claim towards the player's regions after they run out of neutral regions to claim. AI lords may press claims towards the player's regions at will. Oh, wait, balance means that they'll claim neutral and the player. I don't know. Raider free years, initial bandit camps, that's not really a big deal. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I don't I don't know if we should really like move the challenging stuff up a bit because again, we're we're dealing with an early access version of the game, so Let's start fresh, I guess. I mean, after we built our second city, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it was in the bag. It would just take time to claim those other regions. Let's do it bigger, better, faster, stronger. Wait. I want to make a character, though. All right, so we'll start fresh. Um, who did we have before? This guy? No, it was this guy, I think. Big money masook. Yeah, a young masook. Of course, we could be the Harkonnen if we want. Right, I'm going to start with my coat of arms. Let's change that up a bit. Pays not to update sometimes. Yeah, but they asked us to uh, to update, and I don't. I want. I want to respect their wishes, which is okay. We get to start fresh, and that is something I kind of wanted to do. Now it's kind of forced my hand, which is fair.
So when you see the, uh, all right. So some people might ask about the video series then. So that means that we might. Tutorials and stuff have already been started in the other version. I'll just have to use that old version. I'll just clarify. But going forward, I think we'll use this version on all of our streams. And then I'll just have to clarify everything. Oh, you can make it upside down? Okay. That's a thing. Hmm. It's always so hard which one to choose. We get to start fresh. Where's the bear insignia? Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? We gotta do, we gotta do Fritz, right? We gotta have Fritz, so we can go for a classic. But we're gonna make it look a little fancier. Hmm. Man, our logo from before looks sweet, though. Yo, Sig, welcome back as a raptor bear cub, dude. Thank you very much for the support. What if we do blue? Yeah, okay. Oh, let, oh, let's do this, yeah. Okay, we can kind of make it similar to the last one. Alright, it's kind of a combo. There, that looks perfect. Perfect. We got two. We got two masooks. Is that a bullhead? That's Fritz, man. That's Fritz. We could also go as a lady. Oh, this lady reminds me of uh, what's her name from Anno 1800. Um, Maggie. Ugh. She was fun. Now we'll go with this guy. Okay, let's go. And if we don't like the map, we'll change it. Or rather, our starting location. Okay. So a lot of people will tune in and they'll be like, dude, why did you restart? Why are we starting a new game, etc.? There was a change in the version in which we're playing and it seems to have uh, disconnected the saves that we were working with before. Now, truth be told, I was kind of wanting to restart altogether. But... Um, That's okay. I'm not not even mad. It's a fresh start and it feels good. Oh yeah, we got that. Uh, I think we could... No, I'm not going to turn off tutorials. I want still some things. Are, are we in the same spot again? Right, I'm going to restart because it's the same map. <laughs> it's going to be confusing to everybody. Alright, we're rage quitting. Filled with rage and hatred. Okay, we're doing it again. Okay, still filled with hate and rage. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. And sorry about that. My deepest apology, but thank you for reaching out and clarifying. I think we have a mutual understanding. And we all want the best. 
Okay, there we go. Wait, what? Oh, what? Wait, you can start an unconnected territory? No way. I didn't even know this was possible. Oh, that changes a lot, actually. Okay, now I have questions. If we're in a non-connected territory, can we still trade? I think so. This is neutral. That's interesting. That's interesting. I, did, I didn't know that was possible, actually. Wait, no, no. You know what I? You know what I, I really want to build, chat. We're gonna do when we started the um, on the first day that we were allowed to show the game. In that evening, we started a new game on the Prosperity Build, and um, we built on that one part of the map. I've been trying to find this forever. I keep zooming around the map. I can't find the damn cliff. But we're gonna go build on the cliff, chat. We're getting our damn cliff. This is a beautiful opportunity for a fresh start on a beautiful day. And we get to build on our cliff. And it gets to be our main manor. Like, that's my, that's my main manor. Bruh. Uh, Raptor, you have them secretive society of horses. The Hood's members in the chat now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Hooded Horses in the chat. The publisher. So don't be afraid to say hi. Uh, we've if you uh, if you've seen me play games like Sons of Valhalla, obviously Manor Lords, or videos on Falling Frontier lately, and a bunch of other games. Uh, again, is it against the storm or amongst the storm? It's against the storm. They've uh, published a lot of those games. In fact, I, hold on, just a second. In addition, chat, in addition to the uh, amazing helmet that they sent out the other day, which exclamation point Instagram, exclamation point Twitch, uh, or just check the uh, community page. They also sent this over for uh, Against the Storm, too. It's a little uh, a beaver <laughs> wearing like a little helmet. It's the beaver villager plushie from Against the Storm. Only 460 were made, chat, according to the, the little tag. So they, they send out some really cool stuff. And they're publishing some very cool games. A lot, a lot of city builders, or building games in general of some sort. Like Sons of Valhalla, Falling Frontier, and Manor Lords are all so different, yet they all seem very much uh, the same in a way. Alright, chat, we're going to go to Cliff Map. We're going to Cliff Map. We have a new calling. The, the king has asked us to settle new lands. And that is a call we shall answer. Beavers, isn't that Timberborn? Timberborn doesn't have the copyright on Beavers. That's Disney. <laughs> Disney has given permission. Okay, we're, we're finding our cliff, chat. We're finding the cliff. I, I swear it's over here. Am I, like, imagining things? You only respect angry beavers. That was a good show. Cat dog. Okay, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep resetting till we get the right one. It's in the lower left. Okay, we'll check. We'll check. I'm telling you guys, this map is gonna be worth it. This is the best location. Oh, I should put that in my tutorial video. Like, all other locations are incorrect. Here's the correct <laughs> city to build in. Uh, do you know if the devs plan to add a proper fence wall around your whole city? Or only for the manor? Uh, well, I think it's just the manor planned at the moment. Uh, but I would love the ability to build my own fences and decorate and stuff. With fencing. Are we in the same spot again? No, oh, this is different. Uh-oh, we're next to the dude. Well, 
Let's uh, let's see if it is at the lower left section. This seems right. Ooh, look at that big old hill. Nice. You saw the cliff? You did? Damn it. All right, let me look. Where is it? I don't... I've spent all this time in this game and I'm completely lost. It's to the north of your land. Okay, chat was saying lower left. That's where we... Wait, north of my land? Top right, the zone you're occupying. Oh, really? It is. <sighs> That's it. Okay, so if anybody wants to know this location, it's where, uh, I think these are always called the same. I, yeah, I think so. Alright, so it's where Nuslo is. And it's in the, kind of the top, it's on the right section, right there. That's a perfect spot to build a manor, dude. Oh my god, it's been calling to us. Over here. Also interesting because we're directly next to the enemy. And we've started with iron ore and wild animal deposits. Nice. Oh, finally, that solves the meat problem. Oh, oh we have been blessed, chat. A messenger, a scribe, came through telling us that new lands are calling, and he was right. Although I, I still see see that same weird. I, I don't know what that is. People are thinking this is water. Whatever. Anyway, you know, instead of just building the manor up here, shouldn't we build the village up here? It'll be nice and defended. But then again, that's kind of a small space. I think we want to build. Where's the starting area there? Okay, where's the road? There, okay. We got it, baby. This is this is new. We're locked in. It's official. Okay, let's go with that and then um, start laying things out. Manor on top, village down. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we're gonna do the the manor right up here. And, uh, interestingly enough, it's kind of in the middle of the... Like, it's here, but it still feels like it's kind of in the middle. Like, when we deploy our troops. Even though it's not the case, but whatever. Alright, manor on the cliff, then. And we need to rename everything. Ah, we'll do that later. Okay, so, let's get started. All over again. Will he attack? You bet he will. Yeah, he, he sure will. Okay, so I'm thinking to myself, how are we going to do a layout? Okay, yep. Okay, yep. Okay. Alright, I got it. The road sometimes to me always looks like the stream. When we're looking at this, it's like, oh, is that a river? Kind of looks like it. Okay, then we want... Well, this music's lovely. Oh, you know, we gotta check farmland. Oh, good! Good rye fertility. Good emmer. Emmer's pretty good. Flax is a little eh, but that's okay. 
and barley. Mm, we might have to import beer. But that's alright. Like, once we get to artisans, you know, they'll want their fancy imported beer. So that's good. So if we build the manor here... I'm going to clear out this area of trees. Okay. All right. All right, all right. We're good. Now, wait. This is good farmland there. If we build here, if we build the village here, that's good farmland. Oh, but there's even better farmland here. And, of course, where we're going to build the manor. Of course. Like, the where we want to build the manor, best fertility. Of course. I want to build the village there, but there's a lot of good fertility there. Yeah, I think we're going to have to build the village on the right. Can you upgrade the manor? Uh, kind of, yes. You can build... Um, you can go into a, cla a castle planner mode, and you can like add more to the manor, kind of. Like, more defenses and stuff. But you can't like upgrade it to stone or whatever. <gasps> and this is perfect for the church? Oh my god. Perfect. Yes. Right here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to do that. Can I already do I'm just like laying out everything in my mind before we get started. It's very important to do that. And the church will be near the King's Road? No. Oh, actually, there's an end to the road here. Huh. Alright, well, we can make a road leading up to the church. Oh, right, right there, man. Right there. Boom. Frickin' boom. That's just going to be a little placeholder. All right. And then, oh, and there's the mm, tasty contours. Fresh start. Yeah. You know, honestly, our, our last city was beautiful. Everything was going well in that uh, game. It was, it was going very well. And, uh, I'm, in, I'm inspired to do new good things. And I like, I like that. I made a little smaller intersection there. Or a little, yeah. So we're going to, you know, all the lessons that we've learned in our previous builds, we're going to employ those techniques here. God, look at how gorgeous this... How has how this game looked this good? Look at this. I mean, how? Look, you see the little... Look at that, man. The the smoke coming off the camp like this. Like, how is this game just as beautiful at the beginning versus, like, you know, 500 population with a 1,000 buildings? Like, how? Ridiculous. All right, and then... So wait, if we're going to put the church here, we got to have a market nearby, too. Because that's... That's what I'm going to do. So there's a... The road ends about there. Nope. Eh. Ah. 
There. All right. And the church is a square layout, so... Yeah, that's it. That's it. Perfection. Oh my god. It, it feels so good to start over. I can't... Th this was a blessing in disguise. I really hope you can upgrade it with the with stone later and build it even bigger. Yeah, you know the the when you're building the manor, there's an option called castle planner, not manor planner. So I think the fact that it refers to it as technically castle means that they want you to build a castle. You know, they want you to build a big o uh, defensive structure, not just kind of like a little thingy. This game is a big question mark and a huge exclamation mark. Is that a good thing? I guess so, if it's got your attention. I don't like that curve. That needs to be fixed. Unacceptable. I told you guys earlier, this game makes me want to go outside and go to a Renaissance Festival. I know, outside? I know. We need to make it so it doesn't bend so much. There we go. That's nice. Oh, what about water? Oh, that's fine. We'll have some water up here. Okay, no problem. Bum, bum. And then we could have a space for market here. Wait, can we lay out the market now? I bet we can, because it doesn't take anything to build. Oh my god, we can. Uh, that would be good. 21 market spots. That's a lot. This is going to be the best town ever. So, Oh, look at, look at that. I love this too, by the way. This Developers, continue to do this, please. The little videos that kind of just show you real quick like how to do stuff without really having to bog the player down in a tutorial mission or what... I, I don't know. I, I just really appreciate it like in God of War and other games where they show you like press X and square to do a super mega thing and then it just shows you like what it'll do to like you know when you're about to spend a skill point but before you spend it it'll show you like how it works and like what it looks like. It's cool because like if I don't know if a character was going to put their hand up in the air for a lightning ability before they use the ability and then attack enemies you might think to yourself okay the animation of this guy doing this first and then this is kind of slow so maybe i don't want to spend my points on that so like you get a description of what something does and then how to do it and showing like the the cause and effect in a video format is awesome i want more um and i know a lot of games are doing this but the the short 10 second videos we played a game on the channel called um uh victory at sea atlantic recently and they kind of did the same thing too like they did some video tutorials but also some actual like um, you know like playable tutorials and stuff too so I always love that when the player doesn't have to fully stop what they're doing but also we have the option to fully stop what we're doing like we there's a, like a whole codex here so you know things like this although this isn't really complete at the moment I, I feel like there could be a lot more text here on certain things also a lot of things are very self-explanatory like the bloomery converts iron ore to iron slabs and refueled once per month like that's pretty much all you got to say about that but other things I'd like to see more description regardless uh, keep devs keep doing that actually let's delete this I'm just gonna make a road here instead and then we'll build it on the edge now one of the best things that we can do in this game is make things look organic and I'm to I'm getting away from that right now but I honestly feel, for me, 
the church in the market area can be kind of grid squarey because it's a market square and then the church uh, you have to build the church in a square but the church it kind of looks a little more um, free that way like the church when you build it like the church is kind of offset a little bit to the to the side and then at an angle so that looks good and then yeah mark it yeah YouTube chat make sure you guys read the FAQ down below in the description uh, a lot of good helpful information for you all down there make sure you check it out there we go, that's perfect. It could be off a little bit. It's the Middle Ages, you know? They didn't have, like, laser levels and uh, excavators. Alright, and then... We'll build a church there later. Alright, let's get started with the basics, folks. Um, let's do our logging camp. Oh, we could build that on the corner, I suppose. For now. No. Houses will go there. Where do we want to do logging? Probably get rid of that row of trees. Actually, what's the hill like there? Ooh. Well, it looks like we might be able to build there. Okay. Build our logging camp there. Move our hitching post. Order another oxen. This song is so good. three started. I would upgrade them, but we have to have planks in order to do that. Okay, now we need a storehouse. I think we'll put that down here, too. Then our woodcutter. Bam, 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 bam. And then saw pit, but later. Also a hunting post. Where's the meat? There it is. Yeah, what's up, Anna? Good to see you. Yeah, Dragon's Dogma 2 does that whole thing with the videos. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great that um, devs are doing that. I don't want to put it too close. I'll put it down here. And then... I'll figure it out. Hey, welcome back, rabbit girl. Yeah, if you're just joining us, there was an updated version of the game, and when we changed to the new version, it uh, broke the link between our previous saves and um, this current version. So, if I need to, I can always go back to my uh, the previous version to take screenshots or continue my tutorial series or whatever. Uh, but from now on, we'll be playing in the, you know, we'll we'll make sure we update the game. So, if the developers make any sort of major updates. Um, then we'll make sure we focus on that. But since this isn't released yet, there's no patch notes, you know? Like, it's not a public release, so if, if there's some major changes or if we have to play on a new version, we will do that. 
we're basically, you know, we're, we're playing this early. And the developers are kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're being uh, very generous, letting all of us take a look at it through these videos and streams before every... They're, they're asking, at this moment, they've asked for no money. This game isn't for sale. You can't buy it. So everything from here on out is like an early look as to what you might be able to get into when the game is fully released. So they want to present it in the best way possible, so that way, when it is for sale, you have the choice to, uh, to get it or not. And so, you know, it's their baby. And Greg's been working on this for seven years, and, you know, we got to respect that. And they also want to make sure that when you guys see streams and videos on this, that the best version of the game is presented, or the, the most honest version. So when it, whenever they make changes, or if there's crashes or something, we got to we gotta fix it. Like, we got to make sure we, you know, that we're doing that. We're just playing the by the rules, that's all. How the hell am I going to make a path up there? There we go. We'll just follow the contour lines around. Wait, where's that tent? There it is. Quality of this game looks better than AAA titles, yeah. Well, it goes to show what passion and time will give, and uh, in 2024, uh, you know, passion is being replaced by money, and time is being replaced by money. We don't want to spend a lot of money, we don't want to spend a lot of time, but we want to make a lot of money. How do we do that? Oh, they hated our game. How did this happen? I don't know. Let's focus on more money. Maybe it was the money where we went wrong. Let's charge more money. Oh, they hated it more? Damn it. All right. Let's spend less money and charge more money? Oh, they hated it. What the hell? How do we make games? Maybe we've forgotten how to make games. What if we charge more for less? They hated it? What the hell? All right, let's put more marketing into it. That... That, that probably is what happened. We didn't market it right. We marketed it wrong. Oh, okay, so now I need to put down a granary, too. The granary should go near the... Uh... Oh, we need to get logs and stuff. But um, I want to put that near the market. Maybe, like, literally right there would be probably perfect. Okay. All right, let the games begin. Get to work, people. Don't you need money for that? That's true. Here at Corporation, we're, con we're committed to money. Oh, boy. You didn't hear anything bad about this game so far? No, I, I don't think there's anything bad here. I think there's things that are either um, already planned to be improved and just take time. There's things that probably the developer and people who've given feedback so far haven't thought of that when it gets released, a lot of people will say, hey, you should do this. And the developer will be like, oh, cool, I'll put it on the list. Like, there's a willingness, if there's a willingness to listen, then there should also be a willingness to be patient while those things that have been recorded as good ideas are implemented into the game. Oh, we should also finish this road. It's kind of nice in this game to take it slow again and, and start fresh, honestly. 
And you know what? Honestly, this game too also makes you start fresh every time you capture a new region because then you have to build a, 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 a city from nothing. You know? But when you build your second city, it's faster to build because you get... Um, you can import stuff. Do you know what I mean? That's a little too big. I think we're going to go for more of this style. All right, it begins. Uh, Subish, thank you very much for the Raptor Egg membership. Welcome aboard. You used to Paradox style uh, DLC stuff? Yeah. Yeah, imagine this. When you buy this game, th there will probably be free updates and tons of content added for no additional cost. Imagine that. It begins. Where is our other oxen? There's Ott. Now where's Fritz? Must be coming in from the border. Oh. Oh, Lionheart? Ah, uh. yeah, he'll be here soon. He's heading it at uh, top speed. Uh, this game comes out on April 26th. I think it's in... Is it in the pinned message at the top of chat? Did I, did I put the date in there? I hope I did. If not, it's down below in the description. Uh, I'm trying to take everybody's F like the questions that you guys are asking. I'm I'm writing them down and seeing if I can make an FAQ to make it helpful to everybody, so I can just have it in all the description. Yeah, that guy's basically like, "Hey, bruh, I know you're here. Don't attack me." Be like, "No, dude." I'm going to attack you. Oh, dude, you can't do that. Uh, it is in there? Okay, thank you. This pleases me. Dude, look at all the city space we can build down there. We can build more city at the bottom. So here's what we'll do, chat. We'll put the, we'll put the tier 3 houses up at the top. <laughs> is the game for... I like that Greg liked that. That was cool. My, my song during the demo. And the, the FAQ song. Is the game free? How much is the game? When does it come out? Where's the developer based? It comes with the territory, though, answering uh, similar questions all the time, which is cool. I just try to, like, pace it. In my mind, I have, like, a cool down on answering questions sometimes where it's like three people in the chat will be like, Raptor, your hair is so amazing. How do I get luscious locks like that? It's like, well, chat, it's all natural. And then someone comes in two minutes later. Oh, my God, how do you look that good all the time? And then I'll just, I'll ignore it, you know, because we would all get tired of my, my beauty event. No, we wouldn't. But talking about it all the time, you know, it's not about me, guys. It's about the games, you know, and that that's what we really should be focused on here. Okay? I appreciate your guys' compliments all the time, but come on, guys. We got we got to focus on a game for once, okay? We got to get a game in. We got to play a game at least one time. 
Wait, it's only natural? Yeah, don't hate me because I'm beautiful, viewers. Please. Like, look at this guy's hair. This gooper's wearing a hat. Do I have any plan to play games with the viewers, like Apex Legends? Uh, yeah, I'd love to play more stuff with you guys. There was a, a request to play, um, what the hell was it? Uh, there, there were a few games we played recently where I thought it'd be fun to play with you guys, but we gotta, like, have a, a server for it, like in Shrouded. Um, but what the hell? There was another game I played recently. Um, and chat, chat suggested I thought it'd be a good idea. Oh, Planet Crafter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we'd have to get a dedicated server for that, because I don't want you guys to only be able to play when I play. Like, you... Like, you would have to have the same schedule as me. Don't forget to check the level of the foundation. So... Yeah, like, if we do Valheim, I don't want you guys to only be allowed to play, like, three or... Like, you can... You can't really get much done in a few hours of Valheim. I mean, you can, but, you know. So we'll have to figure that out. And maybe when Valheim drops... We could do something like that. Although, I also want to discover stuff on my own. So, it's, it's always tough, because like, on one hand, I want to discover stuff and not have it spoiled for me. So that way you guys can see my reaction to things like that. On the other hand, I do want to play with you guys, because some of you guys are just crazy. With the, like, the, the level of stuff that you guys can build, and like, uh, Enshrouded, and Valheim. Like, the people who play with Uthras, who've also started to play with, like, Symet, and... Forgive me, I forget a lot of their names, but we played, um eco with them and they're they're incredibly kind they're incredibly talented he also played space engineers with them as well and these are guys who are like yeah you know i didn't have a lot of time this weekend so i only made a fully functioning nuclear reactor so i didn't have a lot of time anyway i gotta go and it's like you walk into this place and these dudes have made like a recreation of a one-to-one -one nuclear reactor and it's like detailed they've made a break room there's a microwave in the break room that they've modeled and it's like yeah sorry i didn't have a lot of time anyway i gotta go it's like how are you that talented and the cool thing is is that yeah yeah i'm i'm pretty talented too with the stuff i do but the coolest thing ever is to be able to like have a channel where i can show off some of the stuff that they've done to millions of people who wouldn't have seen their talents otherwise and they don't have to run a chat they're, they're just being themselves they don't think they're anything special Meanwhile, chat's mind, including my own, is blown by uh, their just natural talent and ability to do stuff. These are the same folks who built the... Uh, when Uthras was playing um, Railroads Online for a while, like for a whole week straight, they were building like their own model railroad. And they these people in this game made like regulations in their own game. Like they made rules that were based on actual railroad rules of like how many times you had to toot the horn to say you were going forwards or backwards or... Um, like they would talk to each other as if they were on the radio saying X train is leaving this yard to go to this destination so people would know that they would have to get off on, on a junction or whatever or you know bypass each other like and they're not even they're not even they're just playing like it's fun that's fun to them like that's just normal they're not putting in any extra effort that's just how it goes for them I love that like they're just naturally just oozing talent and creativity and I just get to hold the camcorder sometimes. Like, I'm just, I'm literally just recording them being themselves, and that's cool as hell. Yeah, Stormworks is like that when we play that game, or when we played uh, Scrap Mechanic with Uthras, that kind of stuff. I love it. Maurice, thank you very much for the two. And, you know, these, you know, you guys will ask, like, dude, what's their channel? And I'll be like, dude, they don't have a channel. And you're like, no. And I'm like, I know. I know. But it's just fun to them to just be themselves. That's how Uthras is now. He doesn't really stream as much anymore. But when he makes something beautiful, I want to show it off. Because the algorithm and YouTube's kind of BS to where, like, really talented and, and creative people get smothered out by things sometimes. So it's cool that every once in a while I'll, I'll let everybody else be themselves and get to show that off. Like, you know, Bradford and Lumberjack and Dirty. You know, those guys have their own channel too, but technically... And with all due respect, I think more people have seen them through my channel than their own. But that's a good thing. You know, then eventually, you know, they know that the things that they're doing are being seen and heard. 
and eventually their channels will grow because of that. They just got to keep with it. That's cool. Uh, Fightmaster, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. I play on DaVinci's Gaming Valheim server. Oh, really? That sounds cool. I didn't know he was still alive. All right, we got to build a couple of houses. We're waiting for the uh, logging camp to be completed. And then we're going to start uh, logging over here, I think. It's painful in this game to actually start cutting down trees. It's so beautiful. You know what this map actually reminds me of, too, is a highly modded uh, transport fever, for whatever reason. Is this a different game? No, this is uh, Manor Lords. Oh, I see what you mean. A different map. Yeah, I've uh, I've restarted. We're, we're starting fresh. Are there city walls in this game? There's uh, walls around the manor, yes. Yeah, YouTube streams can lag and stuff sometimes, yeah. And there's not much... Sometimes YouTube will just crap out and there's not much you or I can do about it. You just gotta either refresh or maybe go to Twitch. And watch there for a little bit. Not hearing flute guy? Yeah, because our town is uh, like a tier a tier one uh, nowheresville right now, we're just going to be he hearing more chill music. But don't worry, we'll get up there. Like, I can... As I'm blabbing, I'm actually like kind of thinking about things. Look, playing this game slow is the way to go, dude. There should be no... If it takes you an entire weekend in this game just to build like 10 houses or something, good. Like, this is a game where it's... It's like a jacuzzi. But you just dive into a jacuzzi and hop out. Like, no, you gotta sit in there and, like, rest for a while. It's like a sauna. You, know, you gotta you gotta sit still for a bit and really take it in. This game's like fishing and hunting. You know, sometimes it's not about the fishing and the hunting. It's just kind of about being well, in the, in the boat or the tree already. stand. Even if, even if you don't get anything all weekend. Uh, to be honest, when YouTube recommended your channel, I was expecting a toxic sunglass-wearing stoner, but then good times, happy vibe streamer. Yeah, I have my moments. I can be a little sassy and salty with my friends, but they know I love them, and I respect them. But that's what makes good friends, being able to yell at them and know it's not personal. It's like, dude, what the... You know, but it's not personal. It's not personal. It takes a little bit to understand that. Be like, Alex, why did you do that, dude? And people be like, dude, you were so mean to him. It's like, no, I'm always mean to him. It wasn't just that time. <laughs> Chill vibe for real? Yeah. Well, this, this game is uh, has brought out probably the best in the channel because, um, you know, I want to play games like Hell Let Loose and faster shooter games sometimes, too, but... Sometimes the chill vibe is, uh... Well, we haven't had a game like this in a long time. Alex knows better. Yeah, Alex wrote me a message today, and he was like... He was basically like, Hey, are you going to play anything other than Manor Lord soon? I kind of miss you. I didn't reply. I didn't know how to... I didn't know how to address that, because I don't want to tell him no. <laughs> I'm not going to play anything other than Manor <laughs> I'm not playing nothing else than Manor Lords, Alex. Quit asking. But I don't know how to formulate it nicely. Maybe I'll just put lowercase no smiley face. <laughs> no smiley. I don't know. We'll give it a couple... I don't know. Like, for example, this weekend we were going to play... So, tomorrow, one of my other favorite games... When I went to PAX, I was invited by uh, the developer and publisher, Astragon, to go showcase, like, Police Simulator. Uh, has a new DLC and Construction Simulator. I freaking love building stuff. Like, that's why we're playing this game. And they've got a realistic construction game out called Construction Simulator. 
and it's getting like a like new content like they're putting in new construction vehicles i freaking love that stuff you know tonka trucks if you if you've ever heard of tonka trucks they're from minnesota from a place called uh i think it is called tonka we have minnetonka we have other places but tonka trucks are like a minnesota thing but anyway look all kids love the sandbox when, when you're young playing with the dump truck and the front loader in the sandbox it's never it's never gonna grow i'm never gonna grow out of that for Windows 95 or Windows 98, I played the uh, the game of the century called uh, Tonka Construction. And that's another reason why I'm into computer games and stuff. It was like the, the gateway into gaming. Anyway, being able to play collab uh, collabor collaboratively with friends, like in Farming Simulator and Construction Simulator, I love that stuff. And also that game's kind of broken sometimes and shenanigans can happen, but I don't care. I love it. And so... Long story short, this weekend I was going to play with Harry and Rick, but then we all got access to Manor Lords, and I was basically like, oh boy. So I, I told them, like, you know, come into the streams and say hi, but you're not going to hear from me for a while. And then, uh, and anyway, that D, the, the DLC for uh, Liber Construction Equipment, or Liber, whatever you call it, anyway, it comes out tomorrow. And, like, I'm thinking about playing it with them, but also Frostpunk 2's limited beta is out tomorrow, so I think I have to play that first. It, one of the toughest things about wanting to play with my friends is sometimes, like, the, our schedules don't link up. I hate that when I have to tell them no. I always want everybody to be able to join. So, anyway, maybe we'll do the construction stuff before I go to Japan, but I love that stuff. I freaking I, I love construction simulators so much. And the people from Astragon were so nice. So a big shout out to Vlad and Pierre. Vlad was the guy who was sitting next to me up on the uh, up on the uh, on the panel. Hi, Elmox. It's okay. We love you too. We still love you. Yeah. We'll we'll talk, Elmox. We'll get into some more train games. We got to get you into some construction games. Frostpunk Two is out today at one EST. Yeah, uh, Frostpunk Two's beta is out today. Yes. Will you play, be playing V Rising when the update comes out? Um, maybe. It depends on what else is coming out. Uh, Raptor, what happened with the pub on Manor Lord? Someone told me there was a game ending glitch? I don't know. I don't know anything about that. When do I go in Japan? May 1st. And then after that, I'm immediately going to go to Poland. TBD still. I can't believe it's still TBD. But we'll see. TBD. Elmox, are you still on uh, wherever? Are you still in the crib bean? What's my favorite game for 2023? Oh, I loved Dredge, and I loved uh, Dave the Diver last year. Yeah. For 2024, it's got to be Pacific Drive. 100%. I love that game so much. Um, Manor Lords 2, obviously, but... Oh, you're back at home? Well, welcome home, man. Hope everything's good. Which part of Japan? Um, I'm just going to say Central Japan. Between, like... Osaka, Tokyo, and like, uh, I forget the city in the north that I've been to before. Um, yeah. But uh, I may stream from there a few times. We'll see. Krakow, Poland says hi. Uh, Poland was lovely. I loved all the food. And uh, it's a very, uh, very cool place. Very nice, too, by the way. Everybody was very, very nice. I went and saw, like, the uh, the Polish president's... Uh, like, I was in an office building where I could see him across the... Across this courtyard. I don't know if it was the president or the prime minister. I don't know. Also, I couldn't see him. I mean, I should say, like, where he would be in his office. Like, you could see where he would be. He wasn't there, but... It was cool. Have you found any games that scratch the same itch like Stormworks or Scrap Mechanic? Um, there's Terra Tech out. That's kind of cool. You going to 
Poland next month to Krakow? Yeah. I got some business in Poland. I can't tell you what it is, but it'll be big. And it'll be soon. Greetings from NYC. Well, hello. Welcome. Hokkaido? Uh, not yet, but Hokkaido is... I'd go there. Summer spring soon. Raining already? This sucks. We gotta get somebody assigned there. Right, let's bring in that firewood. How many logs do we have remaining? One. We need two to build the storehouse. Is that Alex? Did he message me? Why the hell? Is that your Discord? My Discord is not even open. Okay. Weird. That was me. I think that was me. I didn't even have Discord open. It's become sentient. Run, everyone. Where's your uh, Where's Manor Lord set? England or European plains? Well, you think England with all this damn rain, but I think it's supposed to be like you know Poland-ish, you know, like Central Europe. But it, I, you know, I think they're just making a, I don't know. But my God, look at this. I mean, look at that. There also is a way to make like a time lapse thing of your town. Wicca keeps telling me how to do it, but I don't know. You have to have a big brain to do that. It's not even that complicated. I'm just like too lazy to learn. It's Bavaria. Oh, B Bavaria? Wait, Bavaria. I don't know Bavaria. I know Bavaria. Central Europe, Germany, if you look at the names of the territories. Okay. And, you know, a lot of those places have changed hands many, many times, so. <laughs> no, chat. It's not Bavaria. Come on now. You guys are going to, like, go harass Greg. Greg, can you change the map to Bavaria? Oh, dude. Hacking in right now to my own game. K okay, done. 1.0 is now out, guys. I'm done. Bye. By the way, uh, no matter how quickly you, uh, no matter how quickly you like build your storehouse and stuff, I always end up seeing, getting some of my food like soaked. It just happens. Oh, we have two timber now. That means we can build the high priority granary. What are the white specks on the on the ground? Oh, I think they're little flowers, because it's spring. Maybe it's wild rice. Wow, I'll go eat that. A lot of great flat land down here for our town. We could probably build up this way too, so we'll build up here and down here. And then farming over meow. And then mining and then Oh boy, the forager's gonna have to walk a long way. That's alright, brother. We're prior to prioritizing meat. Get ourselves some venison steak, brother. Yeah, we updated the game and uh, it broke some of our saves, which is totally fine. We're starting fresh. You know, all those previous runs were kind of a, like, 
hey, what's new in this version? It was just a learning process. Now we're playing for real. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, typically, whenever developers give you access to a game before it's released, there's no patch notes because they're... I mean, pretty much there's a patch all the time. and Instead of telling, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of people in this game's case, there's just a few... It's fine. Look, when we all accepted the keys to this game, we all knew what we were getting into. When's the bear patch coming out? Oh yeah, flute guy. Chat loves spamming those damn flutes, dude. Okay, so our manor is going to be up here. <laughs> Put all that time into making that road look right. Could also be a flute girl. That's true. There could there'd be a lady playing these flutes. Hell yeah, there can. All the uh, instruments for sure. I just call it Flute Guy because it makes me think of that one dude from um, the Summer Games Fest and like the Game Awards who always comes out. And whenever they play that music, there, there's always that guy with the hair. He's got that... He looks like Dale from Step Brothers, I think it was. Just makes me tee hee. There we go. You know, honestly, this town's really looking a lot more planned out than usual, but also very free. Would love a hammered... The hell? Dulcimer? Elmox, you need to behave. We have guests. <laughs> Get Elmox a Dulcimer? He's not really good at accepting uh, gifts. He doesn't. I don't think Elmox likes it when I tell him happy birthday and stuff too. He probably in, in his heart he appreciates it, but he kind of doesn't know what to do when people are nice to him. He thinks it's a trap. <laughs> like when I, when I saw him for the first time at the airport in like four years, I gave him a big hug, and he's like, "Are you okay?" He thought I was like going to pull a knife on him. I'm like, no, it's been four years. I love you. It's been great to see you. So much has happened. It's been horrible. It's nice. It, like, this is the start of the good times. The, the good period. The Edo period begins. Yeah. Yeah. He just DM'd me on Discord. Told me to stop telling our secrets. All right. I, I won't do it. My, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
What do you think about uh, building large yards to produce more products, vegetables, ap apples, etc.? That's genius. We're going to try that this time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to build some very big... Um, and by the way, happy birthday to Elmox in the chat, too. It's, it's a little late, but it'll mean a lot to him. Um, but I love that. The burgage plots, we're going to build some big old fat, thick, juicy burgage plots so we can get those carrots and, and uh, cabbage going. It was last week, but thanks. Yeah, I know, but uh, you weren't here. They couldn't wish you happy birthday when... When you're not here. Oh, let's, uh, did I make a work area for this? I don't know if I did. Let's cut down here. Maybe we'll let it regrow with a forester eventually. A cute bromance with Alex. Yeah, he's, uh... Alex is cool. Longest birthday ever so far. Good. good. Well, you deserved a good good little run. A little vacay. Hmm. Look, horses. We got horses now, guys. Kitty! Oh, yeah, it's kitty. We got kitties now. Did we buy a third oxen? No. I'm going to save 30 bucks for two burgage plots. Oh, wow, we already got a food stall up? People don't even have houses yet, but we had to open up that Wendy's. How much uh, extra wood do we have? 14, damn. All right. It begins. Let's start building the big old plots now. I think we're going to build uh maybe we'll build down here. Are all buildings made of wood? Uh, there's a few stone buildings in the game. And some of the upgraded houses kind of use some sort of a, a plaster. Or at least it looks like they do. But yeah, you can build a, uh, um, a stone church eventually. But yeah, most things are made of wood. Uh, you have a cap of 36, but it says no recruits, can't, so can't actually have a between. Um, no recruits. Um, I don't know anything about that. No recruits? You should start with 12, and then when you upgrade to have your tower, you should get 24. Building a, building a manor gives you 12 for your like personal army. And then building a garrison tower gives you another 12. Then if you capture a region and build another tower, that gives you another 12. Or, well, you know, manor and then tower. Well, I, don't, I don't know. Let's build a big old vegetable farm down here. Maybe we'll build two. Now, if we have enough vegetables, we might be able to export them, too. Oh boy, that's a little, a little crazy.
And those can be for our carrot farms there. And we have uh, places to upgrade those. Maybe eventually we could do apple orchards and stuff here too. Maybe. Thanks for your help though. Oh, you're welcome. I'm yeah, I'm not sure. I don't I don't think I've heard or seen of that happening yet. I haven't had it happen to me. to store our stuff. Our house, I think, is done. Come on. Come along. And then... Start cutting down trees over here. No? Well, I guess where we'll put the Lord's Manor. Manor Lords? Okay, cool. Looking good! Bum, bum, bum. There are outhouses in the game? Yeah, there are. Uh, the um, houses kind of automatically build them. Will the uh, enemy Lord attack? Yes. Uh, I think by year two, we'll get like a big, r there'll be like a bunch of enemies will pass through. And so we could be attacked by bandits, and we can also be attacked by the enemy lord. And he's got a pretty nasty force, but we can, we can take him. Johnny dropping a five gifted membership bomb for the chat? Dude. This guy. Thank you very much for five gifted memberships. Thank you. Okay, so we got two houses being built. Here come the deliveries now. Come on, come along. And then we need more houses, but we want them to be burgage plots. Maybe like that? Yes. And these will be for chickens, goats, and probably more chickens. All right, that'll be our five houses right there. And then I can build two more houses uh, onto those already existing plots to expand to uh, seven. And until they upgrade to the next tier, to which then they can get, well, tier three, then we can get two families in there. But we'll do that at the top. Ooh, Berker dropping 10 gifted memberships in the chat next. Oh boy, it begins. Yep, we're starting a new uh, starting a new map, starting fresh. Look at that little like that little cabin there. Like the the granary just kind of looks like a little house. Look at that, man. This is actually going to be the best build ever. That last build was cool and all, but damn, like having stuff up on the hill 
It'd be beautiful. Dude, I, I want a map that's like some really hilly landscape. I want village up on the hill and then like a slope, you know, with, with like farmland on the on the slope and then, you know, the ro a road going through the town. Like, oh my god. Oh my, oh my god. Uh, Raptor, does the word manor mean village? Um, it, it's kind of like a, a home that's not quite a mansion, but it's like Come more on, spacious. And um, it means a lot of things. But in this game, essentially, it's like a, a building that you can fortify to defend a territory. Kind of like a little fort. But I don't know if Fort Lord would... Uh, would be a good title. Alternative titles for this game. Fort Lord. Uh, Manor Builder Simulator 2024. Imagine a map close to the Swiss mountain areas, yeah. DJ Stocks, thank you very much for your Twitch Prime sub, thank you. Uh, it's going good so far, yeah, we're doing great. Just laying out some houses, and then we got more timber available. Yeah, so we may as well build some more stuff here. What else? Oh, uh, we could do a sawmill next. There it is. Saw pit. Let's get to work. That'll help us make planks for the church. We're gonna have to uh, the church up by the end of the uh, of the year. Does the thumbs up icon mean domestic approval rating? Yeah, basically. Yep, for that region. And we're just getting started, so it'll keep going down because the people want stuff. But we're working on it. We got it locked in. Can I stay with this drink? tannery eventually oh is that the king's road there oh 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 and it's raining again wow it's never rained wow look guys our first time seeing the rain wow Never seen that before. I hope the market's not too far away. Yeah, probably. Well, I don't know. It might be fine.
any combat yet? Uh, not yet, but we we are definitely in a combat scenario. This is a military conquest um, uh, gameplay mode. We will see bandits. We will see the enemy lord try to invade us. He will try to stake or take claims. There will be war. There will be blood. For me, this is like Banished 2. You waited so long for this, for sure. Yep. Will there be any release update before... Yeah. Yeah, this game... The developer is, like, hard at work at the game still. It's not like he, you know, went off on vacation to return after the game's release. Up until the very moment that this game comes out, Greg is probably coding and tweaking and adding and modifying, and the moment he hits that go button on Steam and this game is released into, one po uh, into early access... Um, it'll be a long road to 1.0, but in that time, you know, for for probably right before the game drops, there'll probably be a big update fixing a lot of issues that creators and streamers have found. Then there'll be the early access version that a lot of you will give feedback on of other things that you find. So, like, for the first week or two, there'll be hot fixes, patches. And then, when that's stable and things are looking good, then it's time to start adding new stuff. So all the things that are planned on the roadmap, like cavalry and... Other things will, will come out eventually. Who knows the order? I, I don't know. But things can always get changed up and whatnot. But now that she's dropping into early access and, you know, the money starts flowing into the coffers, now uh, I think there could be some more focus on uh, the more important things, which is now not releasing the game, but finishing the game. So I feel like we're at the... You know, it's kind of like a roller coaster, right? Now we're, we're right about, you know, where the, the coaster's about to drop and we're all going to go on a crazy ride. Not that it's just going to be an easy coast. It's going to still be a lot of hard work for the developers and publishers, but and the uh, you know new music to be added, so there'll be musicians and stuff involved. But it's going to be good. But uh, any more information, make sure you check the description on YouTube as well for all that details. And I'll be having tutorial videos on the game up on the channel. I've already got a ton of stuff pre-recorded. There's going to be a ton of uh, pre-recorded videos out, so make sure you check it out. Um, you know, how to lay out a city like this. It's actually a really good layout. Beautiful. I actually want to save this and use this as an example for tutorials. And this, of course, is just based on following the contour lines of the map. Like, paying close attention to this. And it's a great, like, look at this. We can look all around. And then we'll be able to see the manor, too, kind of at the same elevation. But just, uh, actually, the manor might be higher. And it would have been cool to build the town there, the church on the edge, and then the, then the manor there. But we got a little bit more breathing room over here. Plus, we're closer to the food. And food is good. We need that to not die. Important. So no homes up yet, but we got everything laid out nicely. I think we're going to get the logging teams to shut down and we're going to focus on construction. Granary's done. We're going to let everybody do construction for a while now. We got food for a couple months. set up to you know if the dev plans to hire any bigger team if the game is financially successful well I think it'll be a financial success given the fact that it's the number one wish listed game on Steam and it's got uh, game pass support 
I think the money's in the bag, but uh, we'll see what goes on. What's the size of our army now? Right now, zero, until we build the manor. Affenkar, thank you very much for the tier one sub. Appreciate it. Welcome aboard. cut down a couple trees from there. <laughs> this music though. Get those carrots rolling. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. No, no demo on the game at the moment. Maybe in the future. But I think... Uh, more focus will be on releasing the game and then updating it than a demo, demo version. What's up, Swill? Can't wait till this game comes out. Yeah, not long now, John. Not long now. We'll be down to 11 days. At least until the 16th. 26th. Alright. 26th. 16th is tomorrow. You've been playing the demo since 2022, yeah. I'm gonna experiment with having more like alleyways between smaller blocks of homes rather than long amounts of them. Do you have to pre-order Frostpunk 2 to be in the beta? Yes, uh, Frostpunk 2, in order to be a part of the beta today, that ends on the 20th or 22nd, uh, somewhere around there. Anyway, uh, you have to you have to pre-purchase the deluxe seventy dollar edition to Another get the pre-order beta, which I don't agree with. I think they should have made a demo. But we will be taking a look uh, instead of uh, spending seventy dollars today, hey, folks, to play Frostpunk Two. You can just check out my video, which will go live a little bit later today, and we'll take our first look at Frostpunk. I'll also be streaming Frostpunk tomorrow, so we'll kind of cut back on the. Uh, uh, Manor Lords just a little bit because Frostpunk 2 has quite a bit of content in that beta like there's a lot of um, There's a lot of things to unpack there But the beta also limits to to 300 weeks of uh, Gameplay which sounds like a lot, but like literally a day in that game is like five seconds. So Yeah, Joey, thanks for the twitch prime sub welcome aboard Thank you guys for all the the, the subs and the gift bombs and the memberships and hanging out and Hooded Horse was in the chat, so um, welcome aboard to all you guys. Hope you're all enjoying the stream. Oh good, another house ready. Let's do another vegetable garden. So this is really powerful, by the way. Building these this big early provides a lot of food. 
a lot of food. And what's more important in this game than food is food types. So we'll have uh, meat coming in from the hunting camp. We'll have vegetables coming in from the burgage plots. And then we'll have uh, berries from the forager when we get around to building that. And that I think I'm going to build near the actual source. Oh, Joey Demand, and thank you again, Swill. Wow. 93% on the, uh, the the hype train. Thanks for all the follows and stuff. Wow, guys, thank you. Welcome. This game will be a major time sink for you. Good. Good. Big time investment. Big time. Build our little uh, forger off into the woods there. Build it close to the source. And tuck it into those trees and make it look nice. Doesn't that look nice? It's going to look nice. I love it. Music's good, yeah. Yep, music in this game is outstanding. We did it. Oh, Joy with the three hundo. Long time watcher and follower from YouTube. Thank you very much. This game will have to have harbors and fishing eventually. I hope so. It'd be kind of cool. This reminds me of Anno meets Total War. There's certainly some Anno uh, stuff here. I'd say more banished for me, but... I mean, they all, they all kind of qualify. There's there's something for everybody. Something that seems familiar. Yep, saw pits going up too. It's amazing. Five people were able to do all this. Come along, lad. So, we're about to hit Tier 1. Right now, we're just a little settler's camp. Look at that art for that. That's beautiful. Where do we want to spend our first point? Maybe charcoal burning? Yeah, because if we could employ if we employ less people on fuel making, that makes things a lot easier. But we could also do an orchard, orchard reverb. Until the trees are fully grown, which takes about three years, the orchards produce only a fraction of the yield. Oh. Frostpunk 2 beta just came out on Steam. It's downloading now. Okay. We'll have a video uh, in just a little bit on that.
Construction finished of the saw pit. Yeah. Yeah, trade is very powerful in this game. We'll get to that shortly. Oh, uh, yeah, we have uh, one month left of food and four months left of fuel. But uh, the food is not... I know. It's not that concerning. <laughs> it, the moment we hire somebody at the hunting camp and they kill one deer, it feeds like people for three months. So like one one deer kill and we're we're locked in till like late summer. Well, Cyber Yarl with the three 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 got to build a station for for the hype train. Oh, I see. And we're gonna need a big old rail yard for that. The, the hype is high. There's a lot of hype. There's a lot of hype. It's a lot of hype and excitement. There's a lot of hype and excitement. Yeah, food and fuel are in the same spot, yeah. But uh, fuel is always burned in this game, because people will cook at home and you know, maybe they use fuel on the cold nights, but it doubles in the winter, fuel usage. But also, uh, certain buildings burn fuel to function as well, like obviously the blacksmith and um, the bloomery. They all need, like, fuel. They'll use wood, but charcoal is ideal. Otherwise, they'll burn through tons of it. The The way charcoal works is it, it goes from uh, one to two. So it'll take one firewood to make two charcoal. So it's a multiplier. It's very powerful. And it's a very good way to kind of minimize the, um, the, the amount of people you have to put in the fuel industry. You're scared? I'm scared. No, don't be scared. It's all good. Does the game have food in? Food in. Uh, I'm not sure. New game version. Had to start a new game. Saves no longer valid. Not sure what's new in the new version. Totally not mad. Happy to start a fresh one. Welcome to the three new subs. Thank you very much, uh, Twitch chat, for all the support. Wow, this town is actually, like, coming together quickly. We actually built a lot of stuff. And it's only May? Wow. Let's get the saw pit immediately started. I'm gonna get those planks made right now. Yeah, there's a little farm. We got these these burgage plots essentially are farms. But you could do large scale grain farming with mills later on. We'll have a whole tutorial series on farming. Uh, everything in the game. Everything's gonna have a tutorial. Even how to left click. Hi guys, uh Welcome to today's video. I'm going to show you how to left click. Um, many people confuse the left mouse button for the right mouse button, but uh, Pro knows that the left button is on the left side of the mouse. Okay. Subscribe, uh, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Hmm. Forester's Hut. The cool thing about the forester, too, is you could take empty land and turn it into a forest. So essentially, we could, like, build it here and then just make this whole area forested and just use that to constantly cut stuff down. Raptor, I have two right mouse buttons. What do I do? Uh, consult a priest. Maybe maybe it's time for an exorcism. Uh, oh, the tavern. we got to build that eventually, too. Uh, big space for houses means big care of production, yes. Small space for... Uh, the smaller spaces you want for, like, a chicken coop, goat pens, uh, or when these houses upgrade to, like, Tier 3, we can turn them into, like, uh, cobblers, which make shoes, or fletchers, which make arrows, and they don't really need 
uh, a lot of space to do that. The space is kind of like in the house, but they need a little extra storage area. So you only need big plots for farming. That's it. So for the uh, vegetables or for the orchards. And I don't know if we're going to do orchards. But this game is very much uh, designed to where it, the developer wants you to build multiple cities to specialize in different things. You only get so many development points, so you can't really invest in everything in the game in one place. So the idea is to branch out and build things in different cities. So like, for example, this first city would be great for farming and for mining. Like fo food and weapons. So uh, Americaville. Is the honey mechanic any good? Yeah, honey counts as a food source. Then you can also gather wax from the bee, uh, bees, well, the apiaries, and then uh, you can make candles out of that. And that, that sells for good money, too. You don't play with a mouse, you play with Google Glasses. Oh, okay. Tannery. Cannot wait for this game. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, do you think it'll have enough to stick around completely uh, wise and from a replay standpoint? I think so, because there's a lot of options to keep tweaking how you play. But this game is very much straightforward. Like, here, the early access version is this. You know, here's a map. Build stuff in it. Have fun creating medieval towns. There's only so much to do, though. And it's made by one person. So I think everybody needs to understand that this is not... Um, there's certainly a lot to do and a lot to build, and once you've done it, you might be done for a while. On the other hand, you might want to play this every day till the end of the year or until 1.0. Uh, I think it just kind of depends on what you want to do. Have we been in a battle yet? Yes, we've been in a couple battles today. Um, and then the developers reached out and said there was a new version and asked us to change to that version. And um, out of respect for them, I did that, uh, losing access to my saves, which is okay. So we got to start from scratch, which now we get to build in a plot that I really, really like. Um, but I will, uh, I've already started some videos in a previous version, so we'll, we'll go back to that version. And, and f Despite the two versions being a little different, the premise of the game is still the same in certain techniques. So I'm going to like make sure I express that in my videos where it's like, you know, this is technically a different version. We're supposed to be using this other version, so some things might be different, but, you know, like building a house is still the same is what I'm saying between the two. It's a lot of back-end things that change, but there's no patch notes. I'm not sure. Yeah, the more you learn to play this game, the more you want to play it. What am I saving the middle of the town for? There's going to be higher level houses later. We're going to be building a church here, a market, and then there's going to be real nice houses all around. So basically I'm building from the bottom up to the top. How does the aiming of the soldiers work? Uh, what do you mean, aiming? Get that house done. Yeah, Anno Artisans, exactly. Do the church and the market actually have to be together or just aesthetic? It's just aesthetic. 
Uh, traditionally, in a lot of European cities, a market will be near like the town hall, and there usually will be a church nearby that. I mean, Europe is full of churches, but typically near those are market squares and open areas that um, you know could be used for markets and stuff. So I just build the two together, and it it you, you build the church. Me, I build the church on a high point because it's a beautiful centerpiece to the city, and then build the city around that. And it looks real nice. How much does the terrain affect battle? A, a lot. Um, rain can even affect the battle, too. With it raining now, if we were fighting a battle and we had archers, they would be less accurate and maybe have less range. But I'm still working on discovering everything about that. Do you think you have to build an army quicker with the true enemy so close? Um, no, I think it's scripted that by the end of the first year will be notified that the enemy will be attacking in a year from there. So we have two years to prepare for the first enemy attack. And we, we got it locked in. We know how to win wars. Operation Cheek Clapper is uh, well underway. <laughs> More carrots needed, my lord. Hey, they're, they're working on it, though. Look. Gonna be a lot of carrots. I think they're also be, uh, gonna be growing uh, cabbage here too. So many things are happening. Sorry, it's a Monday, so there's a lot of gaming news and stuff coming in. But we're not in a rush. We're playing Manor Lords, dude. Wouldn't having the storehouse and granary near the center of the town reduce uh, banditry? Uh, no. The bandits just kind of attack and they want to... They, they, they just want to kill people, really. They just want to do that. Loot goblin alerts? Yeah. Hey, do we have enough planks yet? Five, okay. Oh, also, another thing I would recommend, a, a pro tip. Um, your saw pit requires logs in order to make those logs into planks. So it would be a good idea to... Uh, the logging camp stores logs, right? So, you know, if you, if you literally put it next door, your oxen just has to... You know, they just have to go next door. And oxen are a good idea to have near there anyway. So it all kind of works out. In the end, it works out. Background effects are amazing, yeah. This is why we never speed through this, because, like, look at this. I mean, we see it all the time, but it's just, I'm in awe when I see rain like that. In this game. What's max level house? Three, at the moment. I think there's plans to go to four, and possibly beyond. Any lettuce? Only let us pray. You'll not find finer ways anywhere else. Poor quality, safe. 
Bum, bum, bum. What's up, laid back gaming? Welcome back. Wait, first time chatter. Wait, a raid over on Twitch? Let's go. Thank you very much, Morph, for the uh, the big O raid coming in. I don't even have my defenses up yet. We can't defend against this raid. The party's just getting started, brother. Hey, look at this. The whole area's been cleared out. Perfect. Good. A morph raid. Well, hello. Welcome to you and your viewers. Thank you very much, everybody, for the... I'm assuming new follows as well. Thank you very much. Welcome to Manor Lords. For everybody who may be asking, um, we've been playing this game since Friday. And, um, you know, we, like everyone else, got access to it and uh, had been building a village since Friday. Uh, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We were doing battles and whatnot in a different part of the map in a different save. And um, the developers uh, asked me to use a different version of the game uh, to showcase some other changes or whatnot. And... Um, all of our previous saves were um, like no longer work. So we, we were building over here last time in, in this area, and we conquered these two regions, and we're working on a, a, a third. But now we've restarted, and we get an opportunity to build a manor up here on this frickin' cliff. It's going to be awesome. And then also uh, we're going to be building a little village over here. You didn't know I streamed on Twitch? I do. I do. So, but anyway, I'm not sure exactly what the differences are in the build. They've just asked us to use this. I'm assuming it's just maybe more stable or something. Maybe they found a critical bug. I don't know. I don't have access to any patch notes, so I'm not sure what's different with it. But we just leveled up, and now we get our weapons. And a new development point. Now we go into the battles. This will be interesting. But yeah, YouTube chat, if you uh, haven't yet followed over on Twitch as well, exclamation point Twitch in the YouTube chat. If you have Twitch, you can follow over there, drop off your Prime sub if you'd like to spam some emotes and or apparently watch it a little higher quality. Sometimes Twitch, even though YouTube is uh, oftentimes having a higher quality in the videos and streams, sometimes it's a little better on Twitch for whatever reason. So we'll see. Does the Burgage plot size have an effect on yield? It does, yep, exactly. If you actually click on the, uh, if you build a Burgage plot and click on the upgrade and hover over the carrots there for the vegetable garden, in the description for that it says yields depend on plot size. And I think that only matters for the vegetable garden and for the apple orchard, I think. The more space, obviously, the more produce. But, you know, for something like the blacksmith, you can make a massive building for the blacksmith, but it still only produces X number of things. So the sizes don't really, don't look, don't really matter. So yeah, that, that's kind of a thing. Everybody's got some great questions on this game. I've been trying to like make some FAQs. I've been taking notes. I'll be having some tutorial videos and some you know pro tips and noob tips and all stuff. I think it's going to be important for everybody who ha is interest. There's probably going to be a lot of people who played like Medieval Dynasty or Kingdom Come Deliverance who want to play this game too. And this game, I want everybody to have a good time in playing this game and, like, feel knowledgeable and uh, be able to, to do, to have the best experience in this game because then it could get them to play Anno 1800 or Farthest Frontier or Ostrieve or, um, you know, you name it. Or, or the other way around where I mentioned, you know, people might want to go play Medieval Dynasty then after this or Sengoku Dynasty, which is like that, but in feudal Japan. So this could be a great gateway opportunity into so many different games. But thank you very much uh, more for the raid and enjoy your sleep. Thank you very much for swinging by and uh, welcome to everybody from the raid. Hope you all enjoy the channel and thanks for subscribing. We're streaming on YouTube as well so I'll be taking, uh, I'll answer your questions from both YouTube and Twitch and uh, and just chat with you guys too. So I, I try to do my best but we got some great chatty chatters who are uh, doing some good stuff. What is your honest opinion at the moment? I think that freaking Pringles cans are way too freaking small, and I don't understand how they think people are going to fit their hand into here. I think we need to put that thing up to the size of a Folgers coffee can. I should be able to get my whole hand and bend my elbow in there. I sh it should be like an excavator. I should be able to excavate Pringles. That's my honest opinion. I don't understand why these people think that we need to tip the, the thing and hit ourselves in the faces. This is 2024. The caveman era, as far as I know, ended in 1971, right before the internet. Okay? And that's my honest opinion. 
Sorry, sometimes I get a little heated. Chapley, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub as well. Welcome aboard. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Invent a Pringle Grabber. That's probably a thing you would find in one of those. Do you guys remember those uh, as seen on TV stores that would be at the mall? I don't even know if they have those anymore. Do they even still do like the as seen on TV shopping networks that aren't like QVC with the scammy garbage they try to sell to retirees? You agree on my Pringles policy? All right, good. I'm glad. Vote for me. Well, you can't really vote for me because I'm Lord and all that. So, you know, I win by default. But, uh, you know. I appreciate the support. What about the game? I like this game. This game's fun. Like, I, I put in the pin message that it's fun and I just want to play more. Um, and I don't think I would ever do a review on this game until it's finished in 1.0. Because, honestly, this game could go from great to being the greatest game of all time. Or it could go from great to being um, something not so great. I don't think it'll go that second route, but, um, you know, you never know. And um, it, it, it would be hard to do a review at early access because then I feel like I would over review at every update but all I could say is that this game's captivated me there's a lot here and you know eventually when I tire out of it want to take a break from it I'm always gonna want to come back and I feel like that's the same for Farthest Frontier and Austria and a lot of city builders we've liked on this channel and city city builders are a game where it's like I could probably okay you, you guys remember you guys remember earlier this year last year when I got stun locked by playing Parkitect with my friends in multiplayer. Parkitect is a game like Roller Coaster Tycoon where you can build a theme park with like eight friends. And it was amazing to like build all sorts of different, like everybody would take a part of the map or whatever and build their own stuff. And um, that was just so fascinating with me because we would build like in all these different areas and build all these different things. And this is kind of the same thing where, you know, this isn't multiplayer and probably won't get multiplayer until 1.0 release. We'll see. But it's like, once you get bored of building this city, like, we're going to build a huge city here. We're going to build a huge military. And once I take over another territory, um, then it's going to start all over again. So it's really interesting. D do you know how they found you to offer early access? Well, I've got a YouTube channel of about a million subscribers. And I've been around for a while. And I've played some other games from the publisher. And I've made a bunch of videos on this game, too. And so I'm not sure exactly how publishers and developers decide who gets what or whatnot, but I would imagine that the more exposure that you have, the more likely you are to get access to stuff. That's kind of how it works. Can you try the lowest graphic settings? I have a pa potato PC. Oh, if you're looking uh, for like um, minimum settings and whatnot, check the Steam store page. You can get this game on Game Pass and also GOG, but if you go to Steam, it's got like all the... It's really easy on Steam to find that stuff. And... Um, yeah, I don't know what the hell that Discord ping is. I'm sorry. But yeah, check Steam for that. Bro, I got my Discord closed. Do I have it open somewhere? Hold on. All right, full stop of the stream. Full full stop. Checking all my windows. I I don't I don't have it open. It's not even open. Is somebody playing a sound effect? Is there, is there like a Discord sound effect that someone's trolling me with? Okay, did, I, yeah, I've checked. Discord's completely closed. I don't, I, and I don't even have my Discord sounds on. Has someone hacked into the mainframe? All I've got is like email and then a bunch of like Twitch windows and stuff open. I don't know. I have no idea. In this game, is it fun to start all over and build another village? Well, it's actually built into the game. Like like I just mentioned, when you take over a new territory, then you need to build a village there. Because if you build a village, then you can build a manor, and you can tax the people in that village, and then it gets you more money to fund your military. So village equals military. You know, you conquer a new land with your military, you build a village there, you build a building to recruit uh, villagers, you know, you make a strong military, and then you take over another one. And you just keep going until you eventually fight the enemy up here. Or bandits, too. It's Thurston. He ain't messaging me there. It's a Frostpunk 2 Gods demanding a playthrough. We'll be playing that. I have a video ready to go. We'll probably be... Uh, 
we'll be putting that video up in like a, a like a couple hours. Moose62, thank you very much for your Raptor Egg membership. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, we finished. Well, well, well. We finished it. Perfect. All right. Uh, do we have enough planks to build the church yet? 10 out of 15, 50? 10, yeah, okay. Got to get to 20, and then we're locked in. Time move faster, want game now? I know. I know. Well, April 26th for everybody. And also, I have a feeling that on April 26th, I'll be restarting anyway to just start a new city at the very beginning. Because if I showcase a huge, massive town on release day, people will be like, how'd you get to that point? Like, they'll have a ton of questions. So uh, maybe I'll showcase what it looks like when you get a huge town, but we'll start over so I can a answer questions and, like, be helpful as we go. I... I this game and Farthest Frontier are two games where never before have I ever wanted to try to be so helpful and, like, try to help everybody on every step of the way. Because it's just so fun to, like, you know, just encourage people to have a good time. It's like, this game, is, games are supposed to be... Now, guys, this might be, uh... Look, I don't want to get canceled for this, and I don't want you guys to tweet this out or something or tell anybody, but... Hold on, let me look. Alright, no one's watching anyway. Look, games are supposed to be fun. And uh, I think I think this game is fun and engaging, and I want everybody who thinks it's fun and engaging to also make sure that they have the maximum amount of fun and engagement in it. But I don't want them to be frustrated or mad or confused. Although, you know, it's a big game; they might get a little confused and not know everything. But that's why we got to help people, and most importantly, we want people to have a good time because that's what gaming's for. Damn it! Controversial opinion, hot take. I know, ultra white hot hot take but uh you know let's have a good time baby life's hard enough let's, let's have some good some good times game is gorgeous been looking for a game like this to play for a long time i know like look at this is why i wanted to build on this hill because look at the grant there's just a tiny little granary sitting on that hill and it just looks so beautiful i don't know how it got to that point i don't know how it got to that point andrew with the kitty spam hi andrew good to see you kitty, kitty. Being bold saying that? I know, I know. They'll try to silence me, I know. Like we were talking about earlier, this is a game that was meant, it was made by a gamer for gamers. It was a dude who probably played a bunch of these games but couldn't quite find this game, so he made his own. So remember, chat, there's two types of games. There's gamers made by, there's games made by gamers for gamers, like Stardew Valley and all these other games where they, charge like 10 20 30 bucks and then do a, a whole lifetime full of free updates or maybe a few dlcs here and there and then there's also games that are products that are fabricated to gain profits to give value to shareholders so remember there's games made by gamers and then there's products that are put forth to the consumer for consumption to generate revenue and profits that should be exponential for each quarter for the shareholder to have value. There's a difference. There's a difference. Now, I'm not saying that those games are bad. They're just different. There's Arby Sabaro, and there's Five Guys. They're different. I'm going to get in trouble. I need to behave. I'm sorry. But you know what's really cool? Recently on the channel, we uh, we there was an indie collective a few weeks ago, and Hooded Horse, the publisher of this game, was in it. And um, I, I, I was absolutely convinced that they were going to show Manor Lord's gameplay there uh, because Hooded Horse was there, and they were showcasing some other games. But it was really it's really cool to see like these games like Risk of Rain and Brotato and stuff and Vampire Survivors have millions of people playing them. They're very simple games, and like when they announced that they're adding like a new update or something like that people get so excited 
It's it's very cool to see. I love that. Have I played Outlanders? Um, yeah, I, maybe. I, that one doesn't ring a bell, but I could have. You better check my channel. <laughs> Even I don't remember. I'll have to check my channel, too. How's the invasion going? Well, earlier today, we, uh, we fought an invasion of about 80 bandits, and then we raided a bandit camp, I think, too, at the beginning. And then... Um, that was about it. So we've had some warfare in this stream, but now we're we're on a fresh start due to an update. Don't know what's new. I haven't. There's no patch notes or whatnot, but uh, we'll uh, we'll see. Yep, Donna Man videos are on the channel. Yep. Yeah, you name it, I probably played it in terms of city builders for sure. There's lots of great games coming out. You know, honestly, we got a problem, Chad. We got too many good games. There's just too many good games to play. Well, oftentimes people will focus on the bad, but I, my my problem is that the bad is that there's too much good, and it's like okay, how do you like you gotta you gotta figure out when you're gonna play the you know certain games. Ain't no, ain't enough time to play the all the good ones. In fact, one thing that I've started to do now is. While I'm working on editing videos for you guys and working on other things in the back end, I'm like watching streams of other people play games that I didn't get a chance to play. Raptor, you need to call in sick from streaming? Bro, you know what I'm going to do? If I, if I had a sick day, I'd be here streaming anyway because it'd be like, hey guys, not feeling so good, better play some games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've done that before, like... Uh, our playthrough of a game called uh, The Invincible. Like, I had a sore throat, so I wasn't doing much talking, but it was like, oh man, I don't feel good. Better better hang out and do some gaming. I played through that whole game. I loved it. Okay, are we ready to build this church, man? Yes, we can finally build the church. We even have the, the timber to do it, finally. The big moment is here. Let's make sure we... Uh, Save that one. Okay, so now we're putting the church on the hill, which will increase the happiness of the town, which then will increase the um, immigration rate. Wait, two trees? That tree's tipped over. And that's only one tree. Whatever. Church build begins. Okay, so then we can take these guys off of... Uh... That should be 25. Boop. All right, cool. Back to construction. Does this game have decor for detailing? There's only one decorative item, cosmetic at the moment. It's a little shrine. And I usually use that as a marker to the village, like a little sign that says, hey, people are here, or whatever. But it doesn't really cost anything to build. It doesn't really do anything. So it looks like there'll be more cosmetic stuff coming in the future, so I'd love to put down little benches. Um, Let's get to work. Maybe a little... Uh, maybe actually being able to grow in individual trees, that kind of thing. Am I saying that certain companies will say a game is quadruple A to boost profits? Absolutely. Well, I don't know. That was just that was just the CEO being a, a goober and shows how out of touch these people are with the con the customers. That they're not you know they they call people consumers as if you're some sort of. You remember in like you, you guys ever see the game Little Nightmares before? There's a section in Little Nightmares where you go on like this boat and there's like these pig people or whatever that are just mindlessly eating all these like whole plates of slop. 
That's basically how they see you. Like, ah, oh, don't worry, we'll crap out another over... We'll make Overwatch 3. They'll they'll eat that up. Let's crap out another one. Alright, what time is the yacht leaving port? You know, that kind of thing. I want developers to have more power, you know? Publishers certainly are important for helping us to be aware of games and such, but, on the other hand, so many games have gained popular... I mean, Minecraft is what it is today, mostly because of YouTubers, to be honest. I mean, it would have been a good game, and many people would have still played it, but, I mean, it that that is a game that broke the internet for like two years, three years, for the longest time. Little Nightmares is excellent. Looking forward to Little Nightmares 3. Absolutely. 2 was great as well. Little Nightmares is cool. I, ho I hope that inspires more... Little nightmares like games. I, I love those little 2D platformers like that. Or 2.5. Love it. Raptor, check your food supply. Food supply is at zero. We got no food. But that also tells us up there. All right, so let's do some changes. Um, get, this, get this guy off logging. We'll do hunting post and then... Wow, they actually built the tannery. Wow. And then the church. Now remember, uh, I'm not so concerned about food because we've got carrots and stuff here growing. So very soon these will all be... Th this will be too much food. We'll have a problem of having way too much food. Everything's going according to plan. Is there a plague as a natural disaster in this game? There is disease, but it's kind of more like if people don't feel good, they go rest at home for a little bit, and then they um, then they come back to work when they feel better. You can speed that up by building a uh, the forger as a little herb garden that you can build onto that, and it'll grow herbs which people can take then to feel better, but. I haven't seen people die yet from disease. I think that's still a work in progress. Uh, different uh, disease as a whole, and then maybe different diseases and things like that. I think it's still TBD. What can you do in first person? There's only third person. You can walk around, but that's it. You can't fight in battles or anything. We're not talking about like mountain blade tier stuff yet, but maybe in the future. All right, look at this. Look at all these people bringing all this stuff up. Planks are being brought up to the church. That is so that is a great screenshot right there. Look at that. Yeah, except for this guy's on the log. This is heavier than it looks. There. Sir, when the ox is on the road, the ox has the right of way. I don't look like a guy with a plan. I don't look like a guy with a lot of things, but I got it. Trust me. Yeah, maybe there'll be a more comprehensive medicine system in the future. Watch the church build. Do I think there'll be mods? Absolutely. You're all you're streaming always, Raptor. You never stop. I know, but there's manor lords to play. Look, I've set a time aside a time for this game for like, you know, what, th two, three years now that I knew I'd just be stunlocked by this game. So it's not like this is a surprise. <laughs> uh, when are sub badges coming? Oh, do I not have any? Oh, we should uh, we should definitely give those uh, a try. 
Yeah, Richie, good idea. Let me, um... Let me figure out what I gotta do to, to give sub badges. Good idea. Now that we've been doing it for a few months, yeah, let me step my Twitch game up for you guys for sure. Wow, we've almost got 300 subs on Twitch too, uh, guys. So thank you very much for all that support. We're, we're gonna do that. Get those, uh... Twitch subs going. Different color raptors. I think we'll do what we did on uh, YouTube, maybe. We'll just do the, the eye colors, which are cool. The uh, the raptor eyes. Keep it consistent. How could you play this? Uh, you can get this game on April 26, 2024. Other than that, uh, streamers and content creators have been contacted in advance. And they're building in a storm. Yeah, I agree. It's nice to see all the materials delivered. Like, you can see where they're putting uh, logs in here. As they're delivering planks, they're actually pre-built fence sections. So they're going to build a fence around the church. Can you talk more on hunting limits and how fast the herd restores? Um, you can set a limit at the hunter, but I think it's more like if you, the lower you get the number before you stop hunting, the longer it takes to replenish. And I'm not exactly sure how the herd restores because um, it's they're not seasonal. Like berries will always regrow every spring throughout the whole into the summer, and that we get 64 in total here. Here we have 40 wild animals, which is insane. So. What I'd imagine we could do is maybe hunt them till there's about 20, and those 20 remaining animals would continue to breed to keep the number somewhere around 20, I think. We'll see. Boax, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub as well. Yeah, I'll try to do those uh, Twitch subs today. I'll have to see uh, if our... Um, well, no, I'll have to do it. They'll probably have to be approved and take a while. Twitch is a little more protective on emotes and uh, and badges and stuff, so I'll have to submit it. There's an approval process. We'll see. But yeah, I'll work on that. Making things better for everybody. Making everybody have more fun. More mandatory fun. Locked in. No, no bears. No, no, no bears, chat. No. Family is hungry. Alright, so now we'll put more of a focus on food. So we'll get the uh, granary going. We'll get the forger going. I think we'll do more on the hunting because there's... Uh, Heck of a lot more food. Uh, hunt, uh, meat to hunt. This is amazing. We're getting this church built in July. This is a new record. Usually we have the church built by like October, November. Also, the faster that church gets built, the more people that will move in. But food is also a part of that too. We need to have a surplus. Open a Burger King? Yeah, that'll work out. Mm -hmm. You've never been so excited for a game to come out to play it? Wow. Crazy. Increase that hunting limit to 20 for now. I don't want the herd to get too d diminished. And we don't really need that much meat, even that much. Hmm. <laughs> 
The bear is like a Sasquatch. It's never seen, but it's majestic. At least in this game, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, this is heavier than it looks. Yeah, we'll be taking a look at Frostpunk 2 a little later today. In about an hour and a half, we'll take a look at the Frostpunk 2 beta. What are we taking in this region for dev points? Uh, I don't know. I think we might do... Uh, I haven't seen the apple orchard before, so maybe we'll do orchard... Well, we've actually got a really good iron mine here, so I think we'll go charcoal deep mining. And I think this time around, I think I'm going to import weapons. There's a great, w there's a few ways we can really make a lot of money, and I think we can go ahead and import. And then maybe I could just use charcoal and deep mining to make tools, sell those tools, and then just buy tons of weapons. And it, the, weapons are really diverse too, because you got like. You have to buy helmets, and then like you can buy chainmail and plate armor, and there's a lot of, a lot of variety to buy. So, how am I liking the game? It's a great game, a lot of fun. Game is very well put together. Looking forward to more. Uh, release date information is pinned to the top of YouTube chat. You can also check the description for more information as well. What's the dev point near the deer? Uh, there's pelt extraction. And then there's advanced skinning. That also allows you to get meat from goat pens, which is interesting. And then there's also trapping, which I kind of had a, a little luck with, but then once your population gets to a certain point... I, I, I Basically, at the end of our last playthrough, I was making way too much money, had no idea how I was making money. I was trying to import more stuff, and like I couldn't do it fast enough. Like Everything was just like... It was like, you know, trying to give a, like, I'll, I'll hand you a billion dollars, you have a day to spend it. And there was, like, not enough time to, like, spend it all. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Yeah, we'll be trying uh, Frostpunk 2 in just a little bit. I will have a video on my YouTube channel in about an hour and a half. And we will be streaming Frostpunk again probably tomorrow. So first a video today, then more Manor Lords, then more Frostpunk tomorrow. And I think what we'll do is we'll do a, um, we'll probably do a morning stream of Frostpunk. Then we'll play some Manor Lords. Then I'll put up a Manor Lords video tomorrow. And then we'll do more Manor Lords tomorrow too. We'll see how it goes. The beta, um, I don't know how long it will last in terms of like the, if we play the beta, I don't know if we'll be able to see everything in the beta. If we don't, I'll play it again. If we do... You know, I'm not going to play it again if we've already seen it. You know what I mean? It'll end on the 22nd, I think, for everybody. But what I mean is, um, like, how much content is in there? If we see all the content, then, you know, I'll put it on the, uh, we'll put it on hold till the full game releases. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got housing for seven. I guess we could upgrade these plots, maybe. Oh, we don't have any timber anymore. Now we're focused on food, to which we're good now. Now we got meat, berries, we're good.
And the church almost has all the material it needs. There it goes. All right, church construction is nearing completion. Yeah, there's a little diplomacy in this game, but it's mostly talking smack and like pre-written uh, letters to each other, but that'll be developed a little bit more later. No Raptoria. I haven't renamed the area yet. I'm going to have to come up with different names, though, because I can't name every region of Raptoria. Try new Raptoria, newer Raptoria, newest, newest Raptoria. Oh my god. That's a lot of new. Do I think they'll expand the map? No, I think what will happen is they'll make different maps of different sizes. You know like in RTS games when they have like a two like a two V two map and it's kinda smaller than like the four V four map, which is maybe smaller than the six V six map. I think that's how it'll go to where it's like how big do you want your campaign to be? Because honestly I could see myself playing this game where I wanna have a, maybe like smaller experiences where it only takes like maybe <laughs> forty hours to beat the enemy rather than hundred and twenty. Which is good, because then you get to go experience other maps. It's kind of like that in Anno 1800 for me, where it's like, whenever I play Anno 1800, I'm, I'm, I'm locked in, I'm excited, it's awesome. And then when it starts to take longer and longer, it's like, I kind of just want to wrap this up and start over again. Have that, like, initial rush of, like, it being new and fresh again, of, like, a, nu a new a new run. It's always nice. It's always nice. nice new, 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 even? Yeah, the new, new, new. No, what I'll call it is, um, I'll call it 30% more. Or really, what we'll do is call it uh, new shape, same great flavor. But you guys will, you'll get 20% less of the content. So it'll be like, uh, you know, the, the streams will be new. It'll be like, hey guys, welcome to the new style of streams. Welcome to, uh, you know, Manor Lords. Hope you guys are all excited. Okay, all right, guys, see you soon. Okay. Same content. Same exact content, you just get less of it. But hey, same great content. New new shape. It's a new it's a new shape. Not, I'm not going to tell you how much less you're getting, but it's a new shape. That really needs some shots. Couldn't could I I wouldn't want to tell you that. Then you'd know you'd be onto my scam, which you're already onto. Do you plan to uh, buy the oxen to plow? Um, maybe. I w I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell with some of those development things how effective they really are how much more effective they are. I think I'm going to try to do some things I hadn't done before, though. Raptoria Springs, Raptoria Heights, Raptoria Meadows. Ooh, now we're getting, now we're getting good. You can rec recommend a game for me. I don't quite know what I'm looking for at the moment, but I do know must have some banger flute action. Anything come to mind? Yeah, Manor Lords. That has some pretty good banger flute music in it. We'll be seeing that shortly, I think. No, you can't. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. When I first saw horses, I was like, oh, hell yeah. We can have horses, like, plow the fields, like in, um, like in Ostrief. So there's, there's three animals in the game like that. There's the oxen, horses, and uh, mules. And the mules are for transporting things between towns. The horses are for 
uh, trading things away from and to, you know, imports and exports for the town. And then the oxen are for transporting logs around, and they can also plow the fields, but you have to buy, like, an upgrade point for that. Um, I think it's pretty cool that they have a variety of animals to do that. There we go. But uh, there's some things in Austria that I really want to see in this game I think would work well for this one. The, the developer of Austria from Ukraine has done a great... Like, Austria is a very cool game. It's like this on a smaller scale, but it's pretty impressive. Well, look at that. Now we got our church. This is heavier than it looks. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I told you I had a plan. I told you. Okay. All right, now that's done. Now what do we focus on next? More homes, probably. Do a couple quick upgrades. Ah, we don't have timbers. <laughs> How does this game compare to Farthest Frontier other than no bears? Well, there's no bears, so there's that. Um, no, it's, uh, it's much different. Like, as you can see, it's more free. You know, Farthest Frontier is kind of like a forced top-down isometric experience that's a little bit like, uh, Stronghold. But, uh, I mean, they're both very similar in many ways. I think their, uh, gameplay, or how do I say it? Like, the, the perspective of the game is a little different, but the premise is the same. You know, build a town... Make sure people don't freeze to death. You know, your typical survival city builder. Both are the same that way. But this one you can raise an army and that actually... Well, you can do that in that game too, I guess. Yeah, Farthest Frontier, now you can kind of more raise a military and go out and attack enemies. Yeah, these, these games are as similar as they are different, I guess. But if you like Manor Lords, look into Farthest Frontier. You might really like it. And if you like Farthest Frontier... Manor Lords is a is a banger. Where do I have an extra family assigned? Oh, right here at the Hunter. We should have one, two, three, oh, and then four over here. Yep, and then five is unassigned for the building. Okay. We're locked in. We connected with the King's Road there. So now we've got this road that comes from the King's Road all the way up to our manor. It's cool. It goes through the town. And then our manor is going to be right up here. We're going to cut down all these trees and eventually build our fortress up there, which will be cool. Because if this guy attacks us, he's, he's going to have to come through here. And he'd be an idiot if he were to do that. Yeah, Banished is an old one, but man, there's pr there's like games pre-Banished and post-Banished, and I feel like everybody who's making a survival city builder in the last uh, 10 years has played Banished. On the other hand, it was so impactful to gamers that whenever they see a, a game do anything that Banished did, they're like, dude, that's a copy of Banished. It's like, yeah, in this game, uh, you have to cut down trees and make firewood in order to not freeze. Dude, they copied Banished. Dude, can you farm in this game? Yes, you can. Dude, they copied Banished. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, are, are there people in this game? Yes. Dude, can you build a house? Yes. Dude, can you store things in a storehouse? Yes. Dude, they copied Banished. Uh, April 26th for this game. Is it, yeah, is it a game? Does it use a .exe in order to use the executable? It does. Dude. Cops are on the way, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs>
Can you build roads? You know, honestly, I, th I think a lot of people kind of forget that the games oftentimes also can, like, pull from, re like, you know, games certainly inspire other games, but also I, I think people are so focused on the gaming aspect that they forget about the real world, like, you know. If I, if I built a game where, uh, how do I put this, um, I don't know. If I built a, if if I made a game that uh, had an actual real life monument in it, like the Statue of Liberty or something like that, like a New York City builder where you get to build New York from the very beginning, and you know you clear out all the trees of Manhattan and go through all that, and then eventually you get to the part where you're going to build the Statue of Liberty, and someone's like, dude. You just copied that from Grand Theft Auto 4. The Statue of Happiness, dude, you just, that's a carbon copy, dude. You copied that. It's like, dude, that is a real life location. I'm copying what happened in life and like reality. Well, I guess there's two, there's two, there's two arguments. It's either uh, historical accuracy or carbon copy. Those are the two things. If you try to do something new, uh, that's not realistic. That's wrong. Not historically accurate. If you try to do something that's historically accurate, dude, you just copied the thing that happened. <laughs> like, those are the two options. <laughs> oh, you can't win. I, I think some of those people who say those things just don't want to be happy. They just hate happiness. They don't want it. Does this game have a power-up mushroom, warp pipes, turtles that you can jump on? Totally copied Banished. Yeah, I know. Yeah, imagine if someone modeled this to be, or modded this to be Medieval Japan. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Anyone watching the new Shogun series? That's another one on my list, Fallout and Shogun. Chat keeps asking if I'm going to see it. Have I seen it? Will I see it? The answer is I haven't seen it yet, both of them, but I, I want to. The only thing I had time to watch in the last year is like the One Piece series to where I was like, damn, this One Piece thing is good. I also think people forget that when things work uh, really well and are popular, they may start to expect those functions in other games. True. Yeah, how many games now have a fishing mini game? Like, I feel like we're one version of Call of Duty away from actually, like, you know, you're laying down covering fire for your friend who's trying to pull in the big one. <laughs> That's going to be a thing. Like, you got to be down at the docks returning fire at the tree line. Meanwhile, your, your friend's trying to pull in the big mouth bass to complete the trophy for the town hall. Like, I got to donate one more large bass. Dardy ruined us with that. That's cool, though. I don't mind that. Call the fishing, yeah. Do you have to build a graveyard? No, the graveyard is actually attached to the church. And when your people die or die in battle, they'll be buried here, the people from your village. But when you get invaded and a raider's attack, you, you basically just build a corpse pit, and you just dump the bodies in a pit. And uh, although I haven't seen the church... I'm not sure, like, how full the church can be. Like, there's no... There's no limit? Like, in Farthest Frontier, it'll tell you how many people can be buried at a cemetery. But here, I, I don't know if the corpse pit and the, cemetery, and the church are unlimited. The only solution to that, I think, would just be building another church. You can't believe you like Fallout? You were expecting garbage? Yeah. Well, it's good that... Um, we're getting more dubs. We, I think we really need to focus on how good 2023 was for gaming and how good 2024 will be. I mean, you know, we we got a lot of stuff to look forward to here. Mandalore's coming out soon in early access. We got um, a game that came out a few days ago called Lasara Summit Kingdom, which I thought was great for a city builder. More anno focused, more um, more pre planning in that game. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff to like. Frostpunk two coming out later this year. There's things to be excited for. Hype. Ex uh, there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of uh, uh, hype and excitement behind this. There's game. a lot of hype. It's a lot of hype and excitement. That's right. 
I want to make a shirt that says hype and excitement. I really want to I really want to sell that shirt in the store. I always I always come up like every stream chat, I always say I'm going to make a shirt out of something. Like every stream ends with like I'm going to put that on a shirt and then I never do. But that's one that I might maybe possibly think about perhaps thinking about doing in the future maybe. We'll see. Do you need a priest to make the church work? No. I think, in my mind, the church works like this. Every Sunday, everyone will gather at the church, and then one person will just read the scriptures. It's kind of like a part-time thing, in my mind, where, like, you know, there's not a priest here all the time, but the most religious of all the people in the town will just read all the scripture or something on that day, and then they all go back to work, you know, that kind of thing. Like, they, they make an attempt. Like, there's a church, uh, they pray, they worship. There, there's an attempt to do it. Oh, yeah, Broken Arrow this year as well, yeah. Hey, what's up, H3? Or uh, rather, Helios, hello. Beautiful. There's so much gaming news today, chat. So many cool things happening. So much cool stuff. Cod Golf Wars coming out at the end of October. Is that a real thing? That would be amazing. Actually, there, there was a golf game that came out a while ago about... Uh, it was like Rocket League, but for golfing. I don't know what it was called, but I appreciate when people attempt to do things with new, new formulas. I love it when they bring a new shape. <laughs> but same great flavor, but all new shape. I love when they do that. So it's time to build some new houses. Where do we do that? Here? That's only going to fit two. Did you see the announcement for Memo Memoriopolis? No, but keep people keep mentioning that. What the hell is that? Is that a city builder? City builders spanning multiple ages. Oh, really? No, I haven't. I haven't seen that. Well, we could take a little field trip. You guys want to take a field trip? We take a field trip. All right, everybody. Permission slips. I got to see him. All right. Let's check this one out. New city builder coming soon. Multiple ages. Called Memoriaopolis. Let's see. I don't know anything about this. I've never seen this before. Heritage, my child. Oh, hello. Your ancestors built this city in sweat and blood, and now it okay. is your turn. You have my attention. Each step you take may lead you to long-standing prosperity or to dark. Troubled times. Trust is easily broken, and nature can never be predicted. You will have to find the balance between preservation and progress. Hmm. And build a bridge between the heroic past and the uncertain future. Oh, damn. All right, what's the game going to look like, though? Four ages, one city. Oh, okay, that's cool. Four ages, one city. So you get to work through four ages. Interesting. What, caveman, bronze, iron, and age of Aquarius? I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, well, that looks cool. Although, I'm just going to check the Steam store page real quick. Oh, okay, hold on. So this is like a, a Civ-style game, right? Age of uh, Antiquity. Oh, wait, no, this is... Oh, yeah, yeah, a little, little, little Civ here, a little Civ. I'd definitely play that. That looks... Oh, yeah, that looks cool. Also, a little Victoria. A little Civ and a little Victoria here. Middle Ages, okay. 
Looks like they only have those two ages done. So obviously something they're still working on. All right, looks cool. I'll keep an eye on it. There's no release date for that at all, so. All right. I'm always down for new city builders like that. I'm cool. I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm happy to see that. You can join the play... Oh, there's a play test? Oh. Classical through Enlightenment Age. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm always down for new city builders like that, for sure. Like, I would even classify, like, Civ as kind of an... You know, you're building cities in Civ. It's a city builder, but it's kind of more of an empire builder, you know. But whatever. Okay, we got some more plots here. Hmm. I'm not sold yet on that. Not sold. Actually, we need a tavern. We could put the tavern down here. Actually, I feel like we could put it on a this main road down here. James, welcome aboard. Welcome back as a Raptor Eggman. Thank you. Yeah, it, that game does look interesting, yeah. Guess we can cut some of the trees down here, too. Let's have the sawmill logging camp cut down trees over here. There we go. Your build planning style has been improving? Yeah. Every time I build something new, I get a little... I think it's mostly just me being particular about how things are set out. It takes me longer to build, but it is way more rewarding to look at. I mean, we could totally do the, uh, you know, gridiron Salt Lake City if we want to. But, uh... I'm not entirely happy with all that yet. How are the vegetables looking? Oh, not yet, not yet. You know what would be amazing? Imagine a game like Manor Lords, just like this, except uh, you're colonizing America. You're building American colonies. Imagine that. That'd be amazing. And then you have to get ready to fight the Revolutionary War. You're like, first you're building up the colonies as the British, but then... Yeah, colonizes like that, but I, I want something like this. I think we all, we, all, we all want city builders to be like this now. Where you truly feel like you're in an expansive frontier. Colony lords, yeah. Medieval games are your favorite? Can't wait to play it? Yeah. Yeah, and the small fields and stuff because we don't have tractors and whatnot. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Like Age of Empires 3. Yeah, that was cool to, to play. I, I liked Age of Empires 3. The, the storyline and all that stuff was really neat. I think I'm going to have to make some sort of a gridiron here to fit some larger square buildings in. I hate to do it, but... Lords of the Realm 2. I don't remember that one. Ah, this will look alright. Col Colony of Duty.
Uh oh. Bandit camps are getting closer. Does the game provide information about each individual family members in the houses? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean, you get information on them. You can see who they are and what they do for work, but not like their age or like a funny background story or something. You do get that, though, with your, your personal army does have... You can rename them. You can rename these people, too. Um, and then they... I don't think it really matters to the person, but like you can read a little backstory, but I don't think it changes how they perform in battle. Go build a little house there. Um, after my last build, where I realized some of the houses, when we get to tier three, some of those houses are almost bigger than the plot, so. I'm trying to think to myself, maybe trying to do a little bit of gridiron more than I want to or usually would. Oh, yeah. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, the households can grow, yeah. And the tier 3 houses are huge. Like, tier 1 and tier 2 kind of look a little different. Tier 3 could be like this massive, like, multi-story building. But when we upgrade our houses, I'll be a little bit more uh, choosy-choosy now. Like, last time we were just going full forward head, uh, all ahead full steam to just see what the hell was there. Like, what it would look like. It was uncharted territory. Yeah, the, the wells are for putting out fires for the most part. Okay, now... Uh We're going to have to do some mining for stone to build the Lord's Manor again in the future. So we can build a little stone mine. Let's we'll do a quick little road. There we go. And we've got about 140 stone there, so that's good. Enough to um, upgrade the church, too, when the time comes.
Man, I... This is great. I don't think this could have turned out any better up there. We just got lucky with how that looks. You know, imagine too, in this game you could put as much care into every city that you build. You could just put in so much detail and so much, like, thought into everything without restriction to where you're not... You, you, you kind of feel bad about rushing to build things, you know? Like, you can you could easily... I think, really, there's a way that I think you could speed run and just buy a bunch of weapons and conquer the map and whatnot, but that's not where the experience is. It would be like, you know, if you're doing a model train layout and you're trying to build a beautiful layout, but all you've done is just made a really straight track to make the train go as fast as possible, crash in the wall, and then walk away, and be like, well, that was boring. Well, you didn't you didn't set it up, you know? You gotta, you gotta like, you gotta build it. Build it with care, you know? Yeah, there's one decoration in the game. It's like a little, what looks to be a mile marker. It's just got like a cross on it. And it's like a little a little pillar or something like that. But that's about it. But I would hope for like benches in the future. Um, but we're talking about the medieval ages too. So it's like the decorations are going to be like, uh, you know, overturned wheelbarrow, cesspool. Uh, a couple of things to burn witches. That kind of thing. underlying story to the game at the moment is just like uh, you're a lord who's loyal to the king and a baron has staked claims in an area that's not supposed to be his and the king is like sending you out to be like hell you're basically like the cops you're showing up and you're like you know this guy's taking these two territories and you're supposed to take take the whole map and secure it for the kingdom so there will there will be blood but there'll probably be more story in the future more game modes and different game modes with different stories but that's what this guy's come up with so far. Yes, this is day four of Manor Lords, yep. Day four stream, let's see, two, four, six, seven. Stream number seven. It's my seventh time playing this game six hours straight. So as you can tell, I clearly don't really like the game very much at all. Oh, here comes a good song. Here it comes. We'll start getting that better banger music once we get the town up another level, I think. How do we get up to the next level? Two level two burgage plots. How do we upgrade? We need to provide clothing. Oh, okay. Well, we can do that easily. We'll just get the... Uh, if we get a few more families in, we'll just get uh, tanning going. And then, boom, we got clothing. So that'll be... that. That's locked in. Just got to get some people moving in. And then we'll get more food variety. I think they're... Oh yeah, he's harvesting this stuff now. It's September. Well, it says plowing, but he should be harvesting. I mean, they're all ready to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fritz, Fritz is my boy. We love Fritz. Of course, our people are building the tavern first. Tavern means we're going to have to have ale, too. So that means probably barley in the next year. And there's really not a lot of great fertility for it at all. Very poor.
But we can import ale. We can import ale and export something else that'll make us money. To which, I suppose we could start thinking about that too. A trading post, which would go well up here in the top of the town. Build a trading post like up here. Actually, what is this? Well, there's a storehouse there. Yeah, yeah. the developer has taken a lot of time to make this game. The, I think the demo was a great move because the demo um, allowed for... Anyway, it allowed for a lot of good feedback from people who played it, almost acting like a beta, than a demo. Making an already great game even better. there. Probably smart to put it next to the storehouse and the granary. We can trade all sorts of goods and then store them for the town, which is good. Now, the demo was like two years ago. Can other buildings be upgraded? Yeah, you can upgrade the storehouses and the gra the storehouse, the granary, the church. You can kind of upgrade the manor by adding more things to it and customizing it. You can upgrade the uh, uh, the hitching post to stables. Houses can be upgraded multiple times. Um, yeah. Raptor farthest frontier versus manor lords. Oh no, they would team up. That would be like the, um, you know, the the meme with uh, what's his name and Schwarzenegger. Unfortunately, the uh, the wonderful guy who passed away recently. But the the meme that you always see, where it's like gamers and developers, you know, and it's the the thing. Well, I haven't seen you in years. That one. You know what I'm talking about. Manor lords of farthest frontier are in the same boat. They both want you to have a good time. Carl Weathers, thank you. Yeah, it's Carl Carl Weathers and Arnold Schwarzenegger doing the meme where they're both like. You know, sweaty bro dudes doing the the, the high five thing. Both are great. You know what's interesting is that it's like medieval-ish city builder where you get raided, uh, there's starvation, disease, all this stuff, and they're and they're two different games. So when you're bored with Manor Lords, be like, I need a little break from this. Then you go play pretty much the exact same game, but yet in a much different format. <laughs> it's great. 
It's like how you can have, uh, you know, steak and potatoes one night, but then you can have, like, steak and potatoes another night in a whole different way. family and happiness to go up I guess a bit oh the tavern's almost done that I don't know a non-functioning tavern won't give us any bonus but you know it's, a, it's another thing for the future off the checklist so it's just fuel and clothing so we gotta get somebody in that damn tannery where can I pull someone off Logging camp, maybe? Yeah, let's get some clothing made. Get that number up even further. Okay, so, uh, clothing... Market food variety, church level, and then clothing? I don't know if that gives us a bonus. It might... maybe. It might give us a variety marker. I don't think so, though. Also fuel. Oh, I need somebody from the storehouse, I think, to pick that up. All right, we'll have we'll have to have nobody assigned to construction for a while. Yeah, you guys pestered me and uh, uh Crate Entertainment so much about the bear mode in Farthest Frontier picking on me about bears that they put a bear mode in the game. Yeah, they did. Yeah, April 1st for April Fool's Day they did a bear update. Can't believe you guys. Yeah, I checked out Millennia. There's a video on the channel if you want to see what I think about it and whatnot. Does Minnesota have a lot of bears? Uh, probably, I'm pretty sure all the United States has some sort of bear. Last summer, I went to the zoo with my uh, couple, couple of my family members, and of course, there was a freaking bear exhibit. And it wasn't just a regular old bear exhibit. It was like bears of the Eur Eurasias or whatever. And of course, it had to have like a big O... Like a, a special type of big, big bear. It was like a whole family. And I was like, Dude, really? Of all the places to go? And then, of course, my birthday has to fall on International Bear Day. Like, bro, not only uniting all bears, but all nations against me. Like, all, all the world and all the bears are against me on my birthday. March 23rd. Every year. International Bear Day. Yeah, farthest front bear, that's what they called it, yeah. Halson and Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah I, yeah, I didn't get a chance to play that yet, but uh, maybe I won't if it has bears. Which I think it does. Well, that's not true. I mean, w when I played um, Diablo 4 for the first time, chat was like, dude, you gotta go as the werebear. Dude, you have to, dude, you gotta be the druid. And I'm like... Yeah, I don't know anything about this game or what the hell a druid is, but I'll, I'll do it. It was awesome. I just come bust into a room and just start smashing the ground like, Rawr! and then just like, you know, Rawr! Rawr! Just, kill and just kill everything in the room. It's like, wow, being the bear is sweet. Being against the bear, not fun. Not too many games where you get to play as the bear, but a lot of games where, you know, bears are the, the threat. Not many games where, you know, bears are cool and, like, relaxed and chill. Or you get to be the bear. It's always, like... I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, even The Sims 4 has a quest for a Sims 4 Medieval. I think there's a quest in that game where you gotta go kill a bear. 
Like every game that has a bear, there's a quest to like go kill the bear. That looks great. Oh yeah, we also played a game called Bears in Space. Bears in Space was great. Wait, are they build oh they're building a stall. Oh, clothing stall. Alright. We got food. And uh, firewood going. Where the hell's the clothing stall? I guess they're building it now. Or it's it's like on the way. Whatever. Anyway, happiness is going up. We're damn near spaces for future homes that I'm thinking of in my mind here. Also, we can uh, build a lot of stuff up here, too. I mean, there's nothing really stopping us from building a town up here. So we can build a little bit of a town here, here, and possibly here. Cool. Bears make every game better and trains. Bears and trains. Yeah. Well, if there's a game called Bears and Trains, I'll probably have to play it. I mean, there was that one game called Choo Choo Charles, which was a train, but he was a spider. We have 11 months of food, and we're about to harvest vegetables. All right, let's shut down the food production for now. We're heading into winter. Let's get other stuff done. We have for hides. 15. Alright, let's make more clothing. Shut down the hunting. Ah, we got a new family. Alright, somebody moved in for the first time. Good. Shut down some more logs. We got a builder free. Let me check a couple things. Did turn that off. Storehouse I'll need to keep on for the leather and stuff. Super Bear Adventure from 2017 has bear driving trains. You guys are making stuff up now. Now you're just getting rowdy, chat. Did you know that the bear is a ma modern version of a raptor? No way. They can't be related. I refuse to accept that. Yeah, Stronghold had bears and lots of them. The new version of Stronghold, there's like a... Like they added additional quests to it. And the, the new version has you like fighting bears in some of the missions. Like you're going through a bear gauntlet. I thought it was smart. Construction's going like ham again. Mm, ham. Food stall, clothing, and firewood.
Is there anything stopping me from building a whole town in the... Oh yeah, you could pretty much build a town in the whole map if you wanted to, yeah. But then you have to think to yourself, just you gotta make sure you have areas to sustain things. So you gotta have a forester so you can constantly cut down trees. You gotta leave some forest. Did I sign up for the Anvil Empire's test this weekend? No. But I want to. That'll be cool. Bear Man. No, raptors didn't have feathers. That was made up by Big Feather to sell more feathers. I get my dinosaur facts from Spielberg. Wasn't there a road here? Uh, sent over the link should be a simple click on Steam, I think. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Okay. We have the Lego Titanic set. That's the biggest set made by Lego? I thought the Colosseum was the new big one. I don't know, it probably changes every year at this point. Do need to get firewood going, but we can get that going as soon as we're out. Then we'll put people on that. Titanic one's the biggest? Really? Okay. I had no idea. You wish Big Money Masook was in this game? Dude, in our last playthrough, one of my towns had like over 14,000 coin. Like... I, wonder who's floating away today. Hasn't stopped since the morning. I didn't need any more money. I, I couldn't, I couldn't like spend my money fast enough. Like I was importing stuff. It wasn't... <laughs> I couldn't import fast enough. And then I built, uh, like... I built like three of them, and I bought horses to transport stuff. Wasn't enough. Couldn't keep up.
Oh, that's gonna be weird. I can build one there. All right, we'll need more materials, I think. We need... Wait a minute. That only takes two. Oh, plot too small. There we go. We'll see about that. Perfect. You like the Lego City kits? For sure, dude. I love those ones the most. Yeah. Going into a store and seeing, like, the concrete mixers, the, uh, I don't know, loading dock, trains, police, fire. Yeah, Lego City stuff's cool. I love looking at the boxes, too. I don't even have to buy the, the kit. Just the art. The art from the the Lego boxes alone is just enough to make you cry. Like, oh, so beautiful. Damn, my, my town's going to end up looking like that town from Kiki's Delivery Service. Mm. It's going to be beautiful. How close do I want to build to this? Well, probably not close to the tannery. We'll need a little buffer zone there. Maybe I'll build a road here that goes up that way. Oh, actually, well, Yeah, I was thinking about that too, a forester buffer zone, but then I, I don't know if I want trees that close to the main town like that. I mean, eventually we can move the tannery and the hunting camp too. <coughs> but with the food source right there, I can't really go too far away. Damn, look at that. The animals immediately replenished. That was crazy. They were down to like, well, it wasn't down that low, but they snapped back right away. Uh, there was an update to the game, so we started a new file, but don't know what changed, don't know what updated, don't know what's different. How do you expand into new territories? You need influence. You get that from building your manor, and then uh, you, know, you could donate food to the church, or um, I think you can, with your army, you can attack bandits and destroy their camps, and that'll give you influence. It's the uh, the one with the uh, the fist. So I guess for this one, we're gonna have to go south. Although we could go into the middle. Clay deposit there, though that would give us endless clay. We could ship out um, tiles. Cutter camp. Yeah, I still want somebody on construction. Hey, sixty percent approval though. All right, and we should have all the needs met too. Oh yeah, we sure do. Oh, so we can upgrade. If we upgrade one home to tier two, then that will begin the uh, the fun advance. Okay, 
I think we'll upgrade this house to tier two. Oh, they don't they didn't get fuel supply yet. This house will do then. And we just need two houses to be tier two. We just need more fuel. Still no bears, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some writing for the plot sizes on the burgage things, yeah. If you hover over it, it'll say yields depend on the plot size. So that's why I made these huge houses down here with the, the big old backyards. These guys are going to bring us a lot of food at the end of the year. Uh, we're in October right now. So it looks like they are... I would hope that they're harvesting these. They could be at their house. So when these houses are actually uh, harvesting, it'll say pantry, 0 out of 25. The problem with some of these big farms, though, is that if you make a huge farm, they can only store, store so much food at their house. So you got to make sure somebody's working overtime at the pantry to make sure they're constantly shipping stuff back and forth. Thanks again, Lord Raptor. You're welcome, dude. Happy to be live today. We're also going to be checking out Frostpunk in just a little bit. Frostpunk 2 uh, has dropped into a beta. So in about, uh, I don't know, tw 20 minutes we'll go check that out. Yeah, there's defensive structures. Uh, there's a lot of information below in the YouTube uh, description on this one, so make sure you check that out. We will. Uh, we have a lot of that stuff covered down below. We got you covered. Well, at least the market does actually have the range to help them. No one lives there yet. You're playing Frostpunk for the first time. Great game so far. It's amazing. It's very good. Maybe they gave me a control back from my Xbox controller. They may have. Yeah, maybe that update re restored that. Yeah, one guy's developing this game. If you look at the credits, his name is pretty much all over the development, even when multiple people were involved. But he didn't do certain things like motion capping, you know, like there were people who helped with you know capturing animations of people and stuff like that so you know it's not 100 percent him doing everything but like the f i would say the meat and bones of this uh, game are, are all him but obviously the music and other systems other people helped out with city is nice I just like where like I can already in my mind see the tier 3 houses sitting up here next to the church I'm just gonna have to figure out how to split this like I'm probably gonna have to do something like this we're gonna have to have tier 3 houses kind of in a circle here and then in a line there if you hunt bear and deer do you produce beer oh you deer meat and bear meat together wow you're opening my mind, man. Yeah, making a Fletcher and selling the Warbows at the Trader is a good 
uh, option for money. As soon as we've got the, the saw pit doing its work. We, we pretty much did that in our last run. Our last playthrough was pretty successful that way with finances. I got no worries about money. Uh, in fact, the only worry is that we have too much money. We're too successful, chat. We're too good. We might get banned from the game. From the, <laughs> We're going to get banned from this single-player experience. Honestly, happy for the guy to become a millionaire. Yeah, and I, th the guy's, the guy's going to be rewarded for with tons of money because he's not in it for the money. So, hopefully, all the things that are financially related for him that he would have to worry about are no longer a worry, and now he can worry about a true passion, uh, a true a love with making this game. I mean, what a story. If a documentary comes out about this one, we got to watch it. I mean, I would really love to see... Uh, and there was a documentary on the music, but I'd love an hour-long Manor Lords documentary, but especially talking about the start of why he wanted to make this game and how it how it all started. Like, what do you, like, how do you start making a game? You just sit down and, like, open up Notepad or Microsoft Paint and then just start writing down your goals? One, make good game end and then just started making a good game like who knows who knows only Greg knows he'll have to tell us his ways there's a rock in my road unplayable wait I wonder if this will get rid of it nope only brush You hope they had paid loot boxes and microtransactions before release. No, what they should do is send this out to all the, you know, all the review companies and whatnot. Then when they get a good review, then flip those things on and update the game after the reviews are out. That don't tell anybody about the microtransactions and the uh, loot boxes because they weren't there at the time of the review. That's all you gotta do. Make a good game. Hand it out to everybody. Let them review it. And then turn on the microtransaction. I see smoke coming out of this building. This building's being upgraded to tier 2. Smoke shouldn't be coming out of there while it's being upgraded. Glitch detected. Not playable. Oh, yep. There's the alarm. You can hear it. What's the game like? Been waiting for years. Um... It's so enjoyable just to look at the game and not like not even really play like just watching houses being upgraded incredible. Everything in this game just seems like it's been there's been a lot of care put into it. And you can see that from miles away. Oh, got another family. Good. When you hear your family. Combat's great. We'll be seeing some more combat soon. We've had to uh, start from scratch due to an update, which I'm not sure what it added or changed, but it doesn't matter. We know that an invasion will be coming in a couple of months based on how we played before. Probably in the next year we'll be invaded, so we'll be ready for it. Good. Oh, look at all that food. Hmm, no food yet. Another person on wood cutting. I'll go deaf from all that hammering. Don't 
forget to check the level of the foundation. You think they're still removing things? I'm not sure. Yeah, so we can add a second house under these farm plots, and I'm not sure if the second family help. There's not, like, visible information on whether or not it helps them to harvest or do stuff faster. Because the way these houses work is that the, uh, the farming is kind of like a side gig. You know, like, once they planted the farms, they kind of leave them alone. And once they harvest the farms, they... Yeah. But it says here, plowing by hand. So I suppose maybe <laughs> Fritz is plowing by hand. Imagine that. So maybe having more people there would, would help speed that up, but I don't think it's a job that's, like, too hard to do. Like, it, it's relatively quick. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to experiment with that, because this is the first time that I've been really kind of paying attention to it. So we'll see. Can you remove the invasions? Yeah, yeah. If you want to play peaceful mode, you totally can do that. There, There is a peaceful mode with no war. But you can still make weapons to sell if you want to. I'm pretty sure you can still have an army. Even if there's not any enemies, you can still have a... Like a little military parade or something. I'm pretty sure. Welcome to everybody with the new follows. Thanks again for all the gift bombs. Exclamation point gift in the YouTube chat too, by the way. If you uh, haven't yet turned on your gifted memberships, our members oftentimes drop gift bombs in the chat. And so... If you want to claim those, you have to kind of do it in advance by turning on that feature. So just hit the link that pops up with the exclamation point gift. And, uh, yeah. So thanks again for all the super chats, subscriptions, follows, uh, turning on the notification bell, all the likes. Oh, thank you very much for, for everything. It's been really nice to see all the support. Mm-hmm. I was wondering what questions you were answering. <laughs> it's YouTube chat. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I stream on both. I'm starting to grow quite a bit on Twitch, so thank you very much to all the Twitch viewers who've followed. We're almost up to 21,000 followers on Twitch, so that's cool. But, um, yeah, I used to stream only on Twitch, and then YouTube allowed for, um, you know, streaming as well. So then I went over to YouTube because there wasn't really an easy way to restream. And then there was, but then I just didn't do it. Could have been doing that for, like, maybe the last four years. But here I am, start of 2024, since the beginning of the year we've been on both, so... But it's nice. It keeps the chat moving on both sides. Questions from both uh, platforms. Hopefully we can branch out to more in the future, but uh, you know, I've been, I've been on both of these for so long. Yeah, to, almost to 21,000. Yep. It's nice. Double the interactions. Yeah, it's good, because, you know, it, I mean, the, the chat is the best part about the live streams, you know, like. I, Well, also, I guess the second best part is that we can actually, like, play. Th I, imagine making a Manor Lord series in a video format. In order to. The thing that's going to suck about videos for this game is that even when YouTubers do the thing that they do where they, you know, they say they worked off screen a little bit or cut a video down to 40 minutes. You're going to be losing so much content in this game. Like, people are going to be playing on times 12 unless you're covering something specific. But if you're just trying to show the game how it's actually played, you got to do it, like, via streams. Because to do, you know, part 12,914 of Upgrading Village, it, it takes a lot of time. And so you'd have to kind of cut out the village actually functioning. You would only be showing the, the juicy parts where, like, something gets built or upgraded. You wouldn't see the day-to-day uh, -day life. But, you know, some people will like that, I guess. How do we get one coin? Did I trade something? We should have zero. Yeah, I'm in my natural habitat, yep. Fields need a bit of a drink. So could I. Hmm. Oh, 
we're still gathering lots of fuel. Oh, good, the uh, storehouse is coming over and picking that up. Yeah, you can kind of follow people around. There's, um, there's not like a button that will kind of lock onto them. I hope that's a thing in the future. But, um, like there's a third person visit mode. Where you can kind of do that. But no, uh, no true lock on mode. Oh, look at that. Wow. Now we got 11 firewood. Yeah, they're going to be working hard. Yo! Uh, Streeter, thank you very much for the 10. Several games I would not otherwise know of. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Yeah, always happy to play something new here. Always trying to play something for, for everyone. It's mostly my taste, really. I, You know, if, if I play a game that maybe I think I'll like and I don't, then I just move on to other things, but still happy I tried it out. And if we play something we absolutely love, like Banderlords, then we get, uh, you know, six hour... T two six-hour streams plus a video every day. <laughs> Good times. Good times indeed. This village is absolutely incredible. This looks great. This is a. This is probably our best start ever. Because, um, I mean, I, I say that like how I say it about city skylines, where every time I build a new city, I just feel like something about it is better every time. Did I play Dishwasher Simulator yet? No, isn't that a kind of a spooky game? Maybe I will. All right, unfortunately, folks, we're out of time for today for Manor Lords this morning, but we'll be back with this exact same map a little bit later. But for now, let's go take our first look at a new survival game, a brutal city builder, a sequel to one of the best games of all time for uh, winter survival known as Frostpunk. And now uh, we're going to take our first look at the uh, Frostpunk 2 beta which I had the opportunity to try out recently, and we'll be live streaming that too. So go ahead and check this one out. Make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, hit the like button, and I'll be back in a little bit. There's your YouTube video there for you all in the uh, description or in the chat. And uh, we'll be back with uh, Frostpunk tomorrow, and we'll be back with Manor Lords a little later tonight. But Frostpunk 2 first look video going right up on the channel right now. Check it out. I think you guys will like it. And... Uh, all right, I'll see you all in that YouTube premiere, and then I'll see you back in a bit for our stream of Manor Lords, the PM stream, more medieval action, starting in just a bit. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the video. Yeah, 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 yeah.